you can you can tell say that I I play ROM hacks, but I don't speed run them. <laughs> yeah. So okay. Uh, this is take two. <laughs> uh, my name is Oster. Uh, this is Super Metroid Redesign. Uh, the submission is for 100% category. Uh, this is a ROM hack that was released in 2006 by Drusif and uh, a lot of custom code done by Kajardin, who is uh, one of the uh, most advanced um, Super Metroid assembly hackers at the time. And with me, I have uh, Tracy M, who uh, also helped me commentate uh, an 80% run I did for this for a prior marathon. And uh, we've both done a lot of randomizer stuff as well for tournaments. Hello. Um, yeah, I play ROM hacks. I don't speed ROM hacks, but I'm happy to happy to be here. So it should be it should be fun. Yeah, I speed run a lot of ROM hacks. I really like uh, investigating the routing for them and applying uh, knowledge of vanilla mechanics to them. Uh, but this one is my favorite. Um, the difficulty of it is kind of um, like it does play like a casual game with. Um, the difficulty turned up a fair bit. Um, so it's not like Kaizo-esque, but in 100%, some of the tricks you have to do to get some of the items are uh, more ridiculous. So you don't have to do anything too fancy to beat it any percent uh, in a casual playthrough. It just asks you to be able to wall jump and shine spark. But for 100%, uh, you have to... Uh, use the uh, Shrine Spark Recharge mechanic that's uh, kind of custom hacked in from the GBA games. And it's a lot more fast-paced in Super Metroid because uh, Super Metroid actually has a run button. Uh, the any percent route, uh, I'd say it breaks the game pretty severely. Um, it does an early power bombs into early speed into early to learn warfare. Um, there's a really dangerous maze to do for early power bombs that um, you have to do a bunch of diagonal bomb jumps. And basically, if you miss them, you have a chance of falling in the lava and dying. Um, doing Lauren Orfair early without gravity in any percent is really dangerous. Um, Hundo is more, it's kind of similar to how any percent in Hundo work in vanilla Super Metroid. You've got like the new route, which is super dangerous and not the intended order at all for any percent. And then 100% has to do more like a, an old route style where you're doing more intended routing because of um, just because certain items you have trouble getting without some of the required upgrades at the time. I like that that we'll be doing, or you'll be doing some of the uh, more intended routing. Um, there's a, there's a few difficulty spikes that this game does actually have that we'll see. Um, we just still get to sequence break one of them, but uh, th there's a very infamous one that we'll get to that you actually have to do in Hundo that that's skipped in any percent. So. Yeah, the grapple gauntlet. That one's grapple gauntlet. <laughs> um, that one is, I think, the most unfair part of the game in a casual playthrough, and. It's... Uh, old route has to do it, so therefore Hondo has to do it. And yeah, it just doesn't seem to, it, it's as we said, it's skippable uh, for any percent. But because you're picking up all the items anyway, and because you're you're getting you know that you're not sequence breaking the PBs because you gotta get the PBs anyway. Um, there's no reason uh, it doesn't save time to actually do it. Um, at least, we, at least as far as we know yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure because it's um, it's pretty inefficient to uh, to get that PV pack if you're just hondoing anyway because you can grab it much faster later with space jump and you don't have yeah. to do the maze. Uh, so yeah, still at the part that this is still pretty similar to to any run really. Yeah, it's even kind of got the like morph ball missiles uh, go through pirates for awakening kind of things. So it's just um, different rooms. Uh, the enemies here also hit a lot harder, so I have to be careful to avoid damage. Um, there's a few rooms where I'm gonna do an unmorph uh, to 
uh, reset my fall speed in midair so I can uh, try to dodge this green pirate here because this green pirate does a lot of damage. Here we go. And we don't want to use up all this ammo because we have doors to open. We need to farm off the cog out here for another door coming up. Uh, so the premise of this hack is also, uh, and one of the reasons why it's uh, longer is Turian is not locked by um, the four main bosses in this. It's actually locked by uh, 12 guardian statues, and they basically function like the 12 artifacts in Metroid Prime. Uh, so you have to find them. They're all hidden throughout the game. There's three in each major region of the game. Um, so you have to find them all, and some of them are indirectly locked behind major bosses. But um, any percent route in particular, like if you can find a way to sequence break past a boss, then you don't necessarily have to fight it at all. All that matters is that you get the Guardian statue. So um, my current any percent route fights Ridley as the first major boss, and it ends up just not fighting Kraid at all. Uh, this route is going to go through Crate just because Crate opens doors that are like really convenient to have open, and um, there's a like a Meridia glass tube behind Crate that um, ends up being uh, actually routed through a lot late game. Uh, but as is pretty customary for hacks, we have an unskippable force spawn fight, so I've had to get uh, good at actually uh, two rounding this with missiles. Okay, four in is really good. So now I want to get as many drops on screen as I can. I've got to waste one so that I can get more drops on screen, because if you're full, then it won't spawn any drops. Oh. Okay, that was one short. It's all right. Uh, so I did open the floor door, but we have to kill Spore Spawn to open doors later in Prince Star anyways. Fortunately, the, the flag for uh, Spore Spawn dying is just very, very quickly. <laughs> right after you kill him, you can open, you'd be able to go down and, and he'll stay dead. So Yeah, you can tell because the other door starts flashing gray. When, when a door that's controlled by a boss kill flashes gray, that means the flag for it is set. Um, so we had to do that to get wall jump boots, which um, you actually don't start with the ability to wall jump, but we now have it. Uh, the wall jumps are pretty forceful away from the wall, kind of like fusion, but like I just did there, you can actually, um, if you're quick enough with your opposite direction press, you can uh, do a single wall jump, a uh, single wall climb. Uh, those are pretty difficult because you have to press the opposite direction basically as soon as possible. Um, and the later that you press the direction, um, the more momentum you're going to get pushed away from the wall, which you don't always want. Um, and also, not all walls are wall jumpable. Also, um, you can tell, like, you see the ones you've going, just been going through recently. Uh, those are are very much like, hey, wall jump on these. And there's some that, you know, you can just wall jump on, but you can't necessarily tell by any kind of visual. And then there's just some you just can't wall jump on at all. Yeah, so it's, it's not it's not controlled by the graphic. It's a, it's a completely custom tile property that dictates whether you can or can't wall jump. Um, so, yeah, it's a lot of the design of um, redesign was to make it so that people experienced with um, vanilla Super Metroid mechanics can't just use them to break the game wide open. Um, we have to work a little harder for our sequence breaks in this, and we we have ended up finding a lot of them over the last um, several years. But uh, some of them more intended than others. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple things that were like kind of sort of intended, but um, there's a few things that were very much not. 
Um, so we need wall jump to bring back to the landing site to uh, be able to continue eastward to where bombs are. Uh, so fun fact, there's 148 items in this hack, uh, more than the standard 100. And uh, the ammo amounts are actually going to come in several different um, capacities as well. So, I do have to focus in this room because the last jump that we do here is tile perfect, so I got to make sure I don't miss it. Yeah, so um, a lot of the uh, missile and super packs will be getting, uh, they give you different amounts based on whether uh, they were in an open location or a chosen ball or hidden in a scenery tile. So um, there's a couple of missile packs I'm going to get after bombs that are only going to add two to my capacity because they're out in the open. So it's kind of set up to reward you less for the less hidden uh, pickups, technically. Um, it doesn't always work out that way because uh, a few of the missiles that are behind some of the insane puzzles are actually just um, technically not in a chozo ball so, or not in a tile, so they're worth two. But uh, for the most part, the principle applies that, um, you know, for the most part, the harder to find a missile is the more you'll get out of it. I would say sometimes it's more a matter of. Uh... Is it hard to find as opposed to, uh, is it hard to get? <laughs> yeah, but it's just literally controlled by what type of tile it's yeah. inside. So this is a reflex. Uh, it's an unused enemy. Uh, it's a little bit buggy. If you bomb it, it will crash the game, which is why it wasn't used in vanilla. Um, the collision for it is kind of buggy too, but basically it reflects your projectiles. And you have to shoot that one with a missile to get it to hit the gate underneath. Uh, and we have bombs, and so the way I like to <laughs> describe it is, in this hack, a bomb Teresa is actually a verb. That's right. Because... Okay, there we go. I actually really think this is this is a cool part. Uh, the fact that bomb Teresa is is weak to bombs, like that they should have done that in the original. <laughs> Um, I mean, you know, everything else, you know, I mean, the game in, in, in the original, of course, has all the tutorials for when and how to use things, but it would have been kind of cool if uh, part of that would have been killing bomb stuff. So. Yeah, well, I, I, I still appreciate the vanilla speedrun has to, like, have a particularly nuanced way of fighting it. Um, That's true. As the first missile that we get uh, is going to add to to my total because it's out in the open. It's not on a ball or anything. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is this comes to play in any percent as well, but um, most of the bosses in redesign have kind of a hidden weakness to uh, like more unconventional damage types. Uh, so bomb traces weakness is bombs. Uh, there's a few other bosses that uh, are weak to bombs as well. This is a tight crouch jump respin wall jump. Uh, yeah, the res we should explain respin, oh, yeah. which is. Uh... Uh, allows you to essentially restart your spin jump uh, as you're falling. Yeah, it's, it's a, really useful here. <laughs> that's a feature from the GBA games. Um, it's. I said this was the first hack to have it, but a lot of the later hacks have had it as well. I think this was the first hack to have it. This was like this was the first hack to have. Like hacks. if you if you just name any particular feature that's in this hack, it was yeah. probably the first one to have it. Yeah, probably. Um, <laughs> There were there were very few hacks that came before this one, and this is like still one of the largest hacks that exists today. Okay, so this is an infinite bomb jump, and uh, yeah, this is oh, not easy. I need like to not talk during infinite. these. <laughs> okay, yeah, the, the infinite bomb jumps are not um, definitely not free, not easy. Like, like I mean, some people would say they're not easy in in regular SM either, but. This is a whole different ball game because you see those three uh, counters that, that are very much like Metroid Prime. <laughs> um, if those run out, 
can't lay another bomb. So uh, the timing has to be such that you don't run out your, your counter. Yeah, it makes some of the bomb jumps uh, pretty scary. Uh, also, the, the gravity really doesn't help. Like, the, the timing of the bombs is pretty precise. Uh, so there's, like, kind of a balance that you have to find between um, getting the right rhythm. The rhythm isn't totally consistent throughout the bomb jump. You have to be prepared to adjust a little bit if it's um, if it's getting off rhythm. And so you, you have basically the window of the bomb timer uh, of it, like, actually going off and you being present within its radius. And also on kind of the other end of the window is you have to deal with... Um, the bomb counter. Uh, so there are some situations where it'd be easier if you could um, lay the bombs in a tighter window, but you can't because you run out of the counter. So there's another, another missile I want to grab here. Uh, fastest ways to de-boost off the scree towards that bomb block. Yeah, I don't know how much we've talked about the, the heavy gravity physics. And this is one of the things that a lot of people don't like. Um, I, I didn't find it too annoying. I mean, it was annoying at times, but it, it definitely made it for a different experience. So, uh, I definitely... Uh, that was a nice fall through that room. That's, that's kind of what you want to see. It's it, it's actually really hard to fall so, through some of these rooms correctly because you fall so fast. Uh, so we're supposed to go left to actually take the bombs back to Spore Spawn to uh, get super missiles, which is like, honestly, it's prime one tier levels of backtracking. It's, um, but, yep. but we can go over this way instead. Uh, there is a super missile and a pit of spikes that we can actually get as our first. Uh, this is still locked behind Spore Spawn doors, funnily enough. Uh, I want to damage boost off the Zebs here. They do a lot less damage than the side hoppers. So basically, uh, we haven't quite deviated from the enemy percent yet. Yeah, not really. Uh, but this is where we deviate from intended route. Yeah. Uh, so there is a kind of upper passage here into Red Brinstar, uh, and it's supposed to be powerball locked, but there's like a secret tunnel you can go through. So I think this is somewhat intended, uh, just not for casual. Uh, so there is a super in this pit of spikes, and uh, we have to do a, a single wall climb out of this pit, and then we're kind of supposed to have high jump to reach the far ledge, but um, with a really good um, uh, same side wall jump, we can... <sighs> been having issues with this one lately. This is... <laughs> okay, well that was interesting. I am going to go farm because I'm out of health now. Be nice if it gave me any health. Okay, I'm going to max out at 9. particular sequence break is pretty tough. Yeah, those, those wall jumps are, yeah. yeah. The single wall jumps, we talked about this earlier, are just much, much harder. There we go. So ideally going this way saves uh, well, uh, two and a half minutes over going the intended way. To Red Brin Star. Uh, there's a lot of underwater rooms that I'll be going through pretty soon that um, if I didn't go this direction, you'd have to traverse them forward and back. So we get to only deal with them going one direction, which is good. That wave just hit me into the. There we go. I got off cycle with the waivers in this room because I. Uh... Oh. 
Yeah, I got off cycle in that room because I fell in the, the vial plume. So the waivers were in different spots. Uh, so this E-Tank is pretty hidden, but uh, you're actually intended to be required to get it to open up. Wow. Uh, so you can do a little bit of sequence breaking that is, it's been part of the uh, any percent route uh, for a while. Um, yeah, this is- The game wants you to have three E-Tanks to do a pretty tight hell run uh, to get Ice Beam. To come back and get various suit. Yeah. Uh, we're we're gonna skip ice beam for now. So I'm gonna I'm gonna line up this the start of this jump uh, from that specific spot so I can ball up here, get the exact amount of momentum to have uh, that, that spike hit carry me through <laughs> the water exactly between those platforms. Uh, this is the first ten pack missile that we get, um, which is really useful since we have nine max and uh, we have to get through a purple door soon. But yeah, that, that E-Tank is supposed to be required for the help runs. It actually is one of the things that unlocks the elevator to Norfair here. Uh, but we have uh, a pretty difficult trick to get uh, very early, and it basically just skips uh, the dip into Norfair to get Ice Beam in the backtrack. We can route Ice Beam in faster uh, later in the run. Yeah, and Ice Beam is really only used to, to get around this specific area. Yeah, so we we have to infinite bomb jump out of this pit of spikes. We get to brace against uh, the right wall, but I want to... Yeah, so you have to get your bomb jump to get out of the spikes before your iframes run out, and spike iframes are only 60 instead of 90 like other enemies or other damage sources. I notice he's leaving those drops there. If you don't do that, then the enemies will spawn and mess up the bomb jump, so. Also a good refill spot when things go wrong. So you have to you have to kind of position yourself just right to um oh, wow, I didn't <laughs> the bottom one didn't drop anything there. You have to position it just right so that um one of the bombs like pushes you. Uh rightward so that you're lined up perfectly vertically. There we go. And then once you actually get the IBJ, you have to not drop it. <laughs> and have enough ammo for the uh, first purple door of the game. <laughs> We're gonna see a lot more of those. Takes 25 missiles or five supers or some combination thereof. Yeah. They're kind of in place of both power bomb doors and the eye doors actually. Um, neither of those really exist anymore. Um, I kind of those purple doors are generally used to like um, to hide like important locations are used to gate things. Uh, it's a big ammo drain. Uh, they're pretty common to see in front of bosses as well. There's that third E-Tank. Now, if you only get... if There's there's uh, two E-Tanks that correspond to those locations. If you don't pick up, you'll see those two E-Tanks there. Uh, obviously, we only saw one this time. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, one that we found in the red spike room, um, yeah, that one you have to find. Yeah, um, the the other two E tanks are basically there's an E tank in Criteria and there's one in Brinstar. That if you missed those two, uh, they will show up there. Um, that's just because uh, they just made it so that in this hack, uh, those two copies of the E tanks share the same item ID. So. Um, when one disappears, the other one also will. So I got hit there to actually, this room's very laggy, so I got hit there to make Samus blink to uh, reduce the lag a little bit. I don't want to farm my ammo back up. Uh, so we're on the way to Krokemeyer. 
um, in any percent, Krokemeyer actually gets skipped. Uh, it's the intended source of power bombs, uh, but in any percent, um, there are some room states that let you um, lava IBJ the speed booster early if you leave Croc alive, and thus we have to get a different power bomb in any percent. Um, but for Hundo, um, it makes much more sense to just kill Croc, so we need its PB anyways, and uh, it opens a lot of doors throughout Norfair and just generally lets the game proceed as intended. Okay, so there is a trick shot for the super door that I usually do. Okay, there we go. <laughs> that one looks kind of scary. Um, that one's fairly consistent, which is why I'm willing to go for it, but I had missed it a couple times. Uh, and we have uh, an ROB cameo here. And this is a spot where you you have to use some horizontal bomb uh, jump strats to get past this. Yeah, just single horizontal bomb jumps, but you you have yeah. to you have to learn the mechanic somewhat. Yeah, there, there's there's horizontal bomb jumps throughout. I would say uh, at least until you get like spring ball and some of that other stuff. But uh, yeah, it's never more than one. Yeah, the the maze that we have to do to get the quote unquote early power bomb for any percent. Uh, has a bunch of horizontal bomb jump shenanigans in it. That's really bad. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a lot of shenanigans. <laughs> uh, so it's lucky that we don't uh, need to have Ice Beam to get this uh, super. We're supposed to freeze a disc giga for it, um, but I kind of need this one super so that I can super the floor because I'm out of ammo here. Um, And we want to farm up a little bit before challenging Krokemeyer, because, ah, actually, you know what? <laughs> I think that super is pretty bad. There we go. Uh, so we don't have Charge Beam. Charge Beam was on the intended path in, uh, in Pink Burn Star, which we didn't go that way. Um, we're going to be cleaning it up later, because High Jump is also there, but it requires grapple to get, uh, unless you do some shenanigans. Oh, and most of those shenanigans would involve speed booster, which we also don't have yet. So. Yeah. Krokemeyer without charge beam is scary just because um, if you run out of ammo, you're basically at the mercy of the RNG. Um, it's random whether he uh, does the swipes or not that uh, produce the drops. power bomb. No, first three actually. Yeah. All the other ones are worth one. But uh, only starting with three is kind of like uh, it's kind of more what you'd get from your first power bomb pack in the prime games. Also, the, the beam's rate of fire is uh, based on prime as well. So your, uh, your power beam fires very fast. Uh, ice beam fires very slow. Wave beam's kind of in between. Plasma's pretty fast, also, but not quite as fast. Also, those double bomb jumps are, oh, are yeah. prime. So th those, you, you can't avoid those. <laughs> You can avoid the infinite bomb jumps, but not the uh, not the double ones. Oh, 
Oh, and this bridge. I already went through this bridge once already, but... Uh, you're kind of supposed to... You're intended to freeze the squeak with ice beam and use it to get up inside the bridge. But you don't have that, so you have to do a pretty good uh, minor morph to get in. And in fact, it's another one of those places where you would uh, use a horizontal bomb jump potentially, depending on where you actually freeze the squeak, but uh, typically that's where it ends up uh, such that you have to do more bomb jumping to get through it. Also, the nice thing about that big blockade that he just power bombed out is that it will never come back. So. Oh yeah, there are there are custom uh, there's custom actors uh, tied to a lot of the uh, the blockades in this game. So uh, yeah, a lot of these like speed booster or power bomb or whatnot um, structures um, will never come back once you get rid of them. So we're heading to Kraid now. Uh, we could have fought Kraid earlier, but there is a glass meridia tube requiring power bombs behind the Kraid fight. That's basically the reward for it. So we want to have power bombs before we're going there. So we get to cross the underwater rooms again. Pretty typical. A lot of hacks have have the uh, suitless water areas. Yeah, that and the uh, forest heat runs is kind of a staple. Yep. Kill's not really a thing, just because Kraid, uh, Kraid has, uh, well, it's a bit weird because of the, the weapon weaknesses, but the way it works out is that Kraid effectively has about 1.5 times human of health as middle, which isn't, like, a huge amount more, but, uh, there's a purple door in front of Kraid, and also because stuff is based on Prime, uh, the rate of fire of supers is very slow. So, um... Missiles are faster, supers are a lot slower. Yeah. It, ta it takes over a full second between uh, firing supers. Actually, there there's a bug that if you hit a wall with a super and not an enemy, um, it restores um, the vanilla cooldown timer for the next super, but that doesn't help when you're shooting enemies with them. It's kind of a weird bug. Uh, it's nice because you can open the purple doors faster with them, but uh, for enemies, you have to wait over a full second in between each super shot. So it's, it's the equivalent of six supers total, but supers are very slow. This is one of uh, multiple different uh, ready tubes in this hack. Uh, interesting difference between these and vanilla is that um, they don't actually uh, stop Samus's movement when they're breaking, which means um, it's pretty easy to trigger two breaks and then leave the room. 
you don't actually have to sit there and watch it break. Uh, and the flag is still set, so... For some of the other rooms, we'll be, like, playing the power bomb and then just kind of running out of the room. Uh, there's also no risk of softlock, like there is in vanilla when doing that, because um, the thing that softlocks you in vanilla is if you um, get the code to run that freeze the Samus in place while the tube's breaking on the frame that you leave the room. So the fact that that's not a thing means no softlock. Okay, we are headed towards the, uh, what I consider the most difficult part of the game. I think most people would consider this, uh, from a, from a casual perspective. Oh, I got the gate glitch first try, let's go. <laughs> so that this, this gate glitch isn't, like, too consequential for the route. Um, it's just a flat time save descending here. Um, and it means I don't have to glitch this gate either. So this is just kind of like a shortcut locked by wave yep. beam. Uh, yeah, but it doesn't... stay where they're... Yeah, gates stay where they uh, last were put, so it's very nice. Yeah, it's also some pretty cool custom code. Um, so it's just a faster way down, and now I don't have to worry about the gate being there on the way back up either. It's like a pretty much a flat minute 45 time save. Uh, so here... Oh, that was close. Uh, there's a there's a debuff strat. You can get off that ripper to cross the lava platforms faster. Um, it's really difficult. To actually get those uh because the ripper moves pretty fast uh, and i am going to safety safe here because yeah. uh this is <laughs> this is the section yeah, in yes. the game that most highly warrants it yeah it, like i said this is this is the hardest part in a casual run so. yeah people playing this like casually without safe states would be very familiar with that particular safe station <laughs> so this is a kill everything room uh, this disc giga takes, uh, 17 missiles, or 11 plus the super. Oh, got it. Okay. I wasn't sure if I was going to get that snipe or not. Can I get the hole in one? No. I went for the, the high jump strat for that. Even though I don't have high jump. That's why I missed it. So this is a uh, grapple gauntlet coming up. We're gonna get grapple beam here and then we have to use it to escape this area and uh, there's a particularly unfair room that you get. Um, where basically you have to kind of mostly blind swing off of rippers. And... Isn't terrible. That part's not terrible. It's, it's the failure uh, consequences. <laughs> yeah, if you if you fall, you fall in a giant lake of acid, acid that you just, cannot you get die. out of. Yep. So, I've tried to get some very consistent strats for this room, but some of it depends on uh, the ripper cycles, for sure. Yeah, so this is the room. So I'm going to be pretty quiet during this. This particular cycle, you have to be pretty fast to hit. Oh, that was close. Okay, I can still die, but that's the worst of it over. It's pretty hard to be consistent at. Yeah, this room isn't nearly as bad, and, and most of the places you can fall, you can safely get out of. Uh... Yeah, this this left lava pit I'm in is fine. Uh, I actually have to get a power bomb from it. Um, the east lava pit is the one you can't get out of, but um, I just try to be very careful around that one. Okay. 
All right, we should be good now. Yeah, and if you weren't getting that power bomb, then you you wouldn't even need to go down that way. Well, of course, a lot of people fall down that way anyway because crumbles, because crumble blocks are a thing. But mm -hmm. uh, it is possible to get around those crumble blocks. But yeah, that's the worst of it. If I actually failed that first turn, you would understand how bad it is. <laughs> it's... It's... I feel like it may be hard to get the point across about how bad that urn is if you don't see a failure of that. Uh, so I can actually get one of the guardians here uh, via gate glitch. You're supposed to have way for it. Um, oh, that single swing jump is difficult. Uh, okay, there we go. Uh, but um, we're getting items in this area later, as well as sequence breaking into the back of Lower Warfare, so uh, might as well just get it later when we have more items to deal with it. Uh, so here, I'm going to lay a power bomb to get rid of this multi-viola because um, I have no charge beam to pseudo screw here, and they in the way. <laughs> they take a lot of uh, shots from other things currently. I don't want to waste the super on it, um, but they they will mess with you while jumping up there. Um, I used to have a strat where I used to like try and map out their cycles and uh, wait for one to pass at a particular time and then do the climb, uh, but it's not that reliable. And one day I was just like, hey, what if I just laid a power bomb? That would just take care of the problem. So those grapple blocks are not wall jumpable. Uh, without grapple. <laughs> oh, gotta do a grapple, essentially a push off with the grapple beam. Yeah. Like if you ever want to get good at using your grapple beam, this, this is the ROM hack for you. Uh, I call this room Twin Fires Tunnel because uh, I stole the room name from Metroid Prime. I started feeling the need to name a few of these rooms just because, like, there's so many rooms that are just a lava lake and it gets hard to describe which one. So this is Twin Fires Tunnel because uh, it connects East and West North here. So kind of like how it connects uh, the different halves of Magmore and Prime. And this part spits us out into the area where we're supposed to get Ice Beam. So we're now in the part that we are supposed to hell run to, and we're just going to do it backwards to get out. Um, this is your intended escape also, the grapple, because um, the way you got in here was falling down through the big water room after the crate tube, which you can't get back up. Uh, and now that I have grapple, we can go back to West Norfair to get Speed Booster. So there's a shortcut we can take on the way back through the Hell Run section. Uh, this room is actually, uh, <laughs> this room is based on Transport Tunnel A from Metroid Prime 1. Uh, it's even got the E-Tank in it, uh, Transport Tunnel A in Magmar Caverns, so... It's a cute little reference. We'll get the E-Tank later. Yeah, much later. <laughs> Actually, get it after Lauren over here. So once we get Speed Booster, uh, we're going to be seeing much more of the 
crazy tricks in this because we'll actually be able to do uh, the chain sparks and stuff. We pretty much start. Um, I didn't mean to super that. Uh, we pretty much start doing that stuff immediately. Uh, basically, because if you if you can chain spark something, it means that you get to skip uh, the shy spark crash animation. Um, so you just recharge your shine spark off of a slope, and then you just drop it and don't do anything with it. Um, so we do that to save the 70 frames of crash animation you'd normally get. This entire lower north section is still filled with some, some pretty good gotchas in terms of... Uh, you know, falling and insta deaths and such. Um, speed booster is not nearly as bad as the grapple gauntlet, but it's uh, still a place where uh, things can go wrong. Yeah, so I need to farm up to full health on the way in because uh, the strat to shine spark out actually, um, I need the full run distance of that, so I can't stop and farm the thing. So I have to do it now. So the speed booster escape is uh it, the speed booster escape is pretty tough casually. I'm gonna make it look pretty easy. Um basically there's uh there's actually an actor, um and it works this way in vanilla, there's an actor that once you cross it horizontally, um the lava rise speeds up. Um but it's moved all the way to the left side of the room. So if you carefully avoid the very left of the room like that, then the lava doesn't speed up. Um, because you're supposed to shine spark upwards there and uh then have to jump left past a platform, and you're supposed to hit the trigger for the lava to rise faster that way, but um it's possible to avoid it. So I am going to uh get a shine spark here to cross the lava lake again, and uh, holding run in the direction of the slope as I'm touching it, um, that starts the recharge part of it. Um, and so I can crouch again to recharge my Shine Spark, but in this case, uh, I don't actually want a new Shine Spark. I'm just doing that to skip the crash animation. Um, so there's a lot of uh, ways we can take advantage of slopes to do that. And here we can actually just spark through this middle section of uh, the stupid squeak tunnel. Uh, and then we can spark up the shaft. So it's kind of important to manage health here. Um, so yeah, the, the other thing that sets us apart from um, like GBA Troid is uh, your shine spark still does damage as per SM. So if you're using it for um, all these like chain spark purposes, um, you have to manage your health in addition to that. Um, most of the ROM hacks for Super Metroid that include this feature actually disable the Shine Spark um, from damaging you. Uh, but redesign's kind of unique in that it doesn't. It just lets you take the full brunt of it. Uh, so there, this is, we're coming up on Wade Beam. This, I'm going to go for a Shine Spark chain on the way out to get under the gate. But I call this Wave Spark. Uh, it's pretty tight. Um, it's a pretty narrow window for height to get it, and you don't have a lot of time for it. Okay, there we go. I'm really happy I got that. Right now, time for some cleanup. Yeah, so the power of chaining, um, and it, it, there's a lot of like movement optimization cases where it's better to run past the thing, and if you can find a slope to chain off of to get you back to the spot you intend to use the spark at, um, that's better. Um, so short short charging, as you may be familiar with it, in vanilla SM doesn't really exist in this hack, because um, it this the way the speed booster is custom coded is it basically it checks for every frame that you're running instead of just like the four particular animation frames, um, so you can't cheat um, 
the amount of run distance required that way. Uh, you can do something which I'll try to explain after this. Uh, I gotta be careful here with these side hoppers. One, two, three, and I gotta chain. I don't have to chain this one, but it's it's ideal too because I can break through a wall here with it. I there is so little time to get the chain off in front of that gate since it's closed. So yeah, I'm gonna be getting um, a super pack that I'd be getting at 90% anyway, just because um, we need lots of ammo for things anyways. But yeah, you were talking about uh, uh, we can uh, we we don't have the short charge. We do have the stutter. As yeah, you where you were going? Yeah, yeah, we have to stutter. Um, and interestingly enough, you. Uh, because of uh, the way this one is coded, um, it only counts your stutter frames if you're holding run. So stuttering is just basically um, before your first, when your first like tap, before when your first dash tap would be, um, you let go of the D-pad um, once or twice in a way that doesn't break Samus's run animation. And if you do that, you can shorten the distance even more. So. Um, it's supposed to help you reduce your short charges in vanilla even more than normal. Uh, and it's one of the more advanced techniques, but it's the only thing that you can do to affect them in this. Uh, and I need to farm back up to full because this area is extremely ammo intensive. Um, a lot of the game is really ammo intensive, but uh, particularly since our maxes are pretty low right now, we've got max of 25 and 5 right now, and there's a lot of... Uh, uh, there's actually several purple doors and green gates that I have to take care of in this area. Yeah, unusual for this area to be done really late if you, in a run, as as runners are trying to find, or as a, I should say, as a casual player is trying to find uh, those last. Uh, uh, the guardians, yeah. Yeah, the guardians, yeah. Uh, it's like the end game key hunt that you normally see in the prime games. So th this is a really hidden missile to, to super the ground there. Uh, the big thing that we get here is uh, high jump, which is locked behind grapple. Uh, so for any percent, you uh, you do a frame perfect trick with um, it's actually double frame perfect. I think uh, I need to focus on my farming here. Uh, Yeah, okay, so uh, there's a frame perfect trick called uh, uh, Spike Suit that lets you store a Shrine Spark, and that's the way that um, any percent will get to high jump. Um, you see it used in vanilla a bit to save like very, uh, a very small amounts of time exiting Dragon. Um, Probably the most famous location for it, yeah. In any percent, there's a lot of required uses of it in the any percent route. Uh, it actually doesn't get used in Hundo, which is kind of nice because it's a huge pain. <laughs> uh, but any percent has quite a few uses of it. Uh, when well, it's... high jump boots. Oh, go ahead. Nah, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I say high jump boots will in this in this game will also include spring ball. Ah, yes, yeah, another fusion kind of reference. Yep. I, like, I, there I consi is another item. Yeah, there is another item that will take the place of, of Spring Ball, although it's a very different item. Oops. Yeah, so th the weird thing is... Um, there, There's a lot of um, glitches that has to do with... Um, like for mid-air Spring Ball jumps in vanilla, uh, that's often used in randomizer. Um, those glitches have to do with um, unequipping and re-equipping Spring Ball and getting an extra jump out of it. But um, because in uh, redesign, it's actually tied to the high jump item. Uh, 
you get lower jump height when you try to do stuff like that. So it's it, the effects of it is kind of interesting. Oh, this is like the first time in a while I've actually had that spark not kill the first side hopper. That's unfortunate. Uh, I might be able to hitbox it. Yeah, okay, yeah. The PV invincibility frames got it to not damage me. Yeah, those hard, those side hoppers will get you if you're not careful again in a casual playthrough trying to pick up that charge beam. Yeah, th this is the path where you would be able to get charge beam from if you follow the intended path at the start. Um, yeah, and you, yeah, and you can you can get those high jump boosts before uh, speed. You just need the grapple beam for it. So, uh, so you could have that charge beam a lot earlier. That's why I guess the charge beam you can have a lot earlier if you wanted to go back and get it. Yeah, it's just not strictly needed for anything in the early game, really. We have just enough ammo to get by without it, and uh, it routes better into when you're picking up yep. um, high jump and a whole bunch of other stuff. So I would like to fill up my super count. So we're going to get x-ray soon, which is fairly hidden. Oh, it's not that hidden, but uh, we do have to do uh, I have to set up the speed booster trick to get it. Ah, uh, this one's just a speed ball. So I got to clear the power bomb blocks here. Um, oh, OK. You also have to, like, push your door shot with enough speed here so that it reaches the door in time. But kind of nice that we get to use. We actually have some a nice use for X-ray. Uh, that some of you are going to be familiar with when we get to it. That um, will come up much later on in the run. Yeah, that's not like super important or anything. But we have to get it for Hondo. Um, no, but it's it's a nice it's a nice bonus. Oh, I got both drops, both super drops back. And I just wasted one. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, well, uh, a game give us a game take it the way. The, the power bomb placement there was so that I would have enough time to go up and shoot the super block that's guarding the other super um, to lower, to make it so I don't have max supers by the time the power bomb hits the ripper so that the ripper will actually drop me a super. Why is this guy in the way? So there's... A lot of shine sparking to some of these items. Uh, some of these are just get up all the space jump, but um, uh, we don't go through a lot of these areas at a time where we actually have it. So like there, there's there's a lot of items and criteria that would. Uh, I would say are intended to have space jump for and benefit heavily from having space jump for them. Mm -hmm. But uh, we just, after we get back to Criteria, uh, we just do the entire rest of it in one go. And we never have to go back to it. So like there's, there's a guardian that, that, that is really nice with space jump. <laughs> space jump and screw attack, but. So I'm trying to get as many like stray super drops as I can. So I had to go into that little room just to hit a remote gate because uh, we have to free the Decora. Um, we have to free the Decora to unlock uh, what's going to be the first guardian of the run. Um, and this is one of the most ammo intensive guardians in the in the game. So there's there's two gates uh, locking that Decora. And then once we're past that, um, there's like a there's another remote gate that's directly blocking the Guardian, and the gate switch is behind a purple door. <laughs> so, uh, there's just tons of ammo we have to use. So I love it when you get the uh, miss the two missiles there on one jump. <laughs> so I, I power bomb here so I can actually just like try and get as many super drops from these. Wow, that's unlucky. <laughs> I I usually get at least three out of four of those to be supers because the the rippers are basically guaranteed. Um, the Zealas are very likely to drop supers, um, but the Rippers are guaranteed, so it's really unlikely that neither of the Zealas drops one. Uh, 
All right, so the ammo balancing is kind of weird here. Um, you absolutely need three supers to proceed here. You can't sub them for missiles. Um, but depending on your missile count, the rest of it can vary. Um, but the awkward thing is just that it's easier to farm back supers than it is to farm back missiles. So there's like some cases where you'd rather use the... There's some cases where you'd rather use missiles on the purple doors, and there's some cases where you'd rather use supers. And it's just like, how many do you actually need? Um, and which is easier to farm back at a particular time? And we set up the giant sparks so that we can kill these giant side hoppers in this room. Uh, this room is kind of a death trap. Uh, so you have to kill six enemies to get out and the farm enemies count. Um, these side hoppers are very, very hardy. Um, they don't even take damage from uh, charge beam or beams. Um, you basically have to use missiles and supers on them. And we kind of don't have enough for that. Um, you don't have to kill them since you can just kill six respawning bugs and get out that way. Uh, so an old strat that we did before I thought of the Shine Spark was uh, we manipulated them to jump after you off screen to the left and then... Um, but it was hard to get the manipulation to go right. Um, and basically if you didn't get the manip to go right, then you just died. Yeah, in a casual run, again, it's another location you're not getting likely to get to until you're much healthier and, you know... Yeah, it's just... So uh, a lot more ammo and a lot more of everything. So. It's just much more efficient to do this now, unfortunately. Yep. Well, fortunately, you've got that uh, the nice speed booster shot now, so it works out. Yeah, it makes it much better. So, you know... The elevator missile. This missile's cute. I like this one. Uh, so, after this, I'm going right back to Criteria. The very first item uh, we get on a return trip to Criteria is uh, one of the most insane items in the run. <laughs> um, it's a several room Shine Spark chain to get a Super Missile pack. Yeah, not gonna lie, I have no idea how anyone figured out how to get, <laughs> get some of these. In my playthrough, uh, when it was described, just the kind of thing uh, I was supposed to do to get this super, I just said, nope. <laughs> uh, the movement's also a lot different in these rooms with uh, high jump and speed booster. Uh, oh, and spring ball is crazy in this. Uh, you get triple the horizontal bounce speed than you do in vanilla. Also, I never touched it on this, but um, your base morph ball speed is actually slower um, in redesign. And Spring Ball actually, this isn't, a lot of people don't know this, but Spring Ball actually has an entirely different set of physics um, in the physics table. Uh, you can set them to be different speeds. Uh, vanilla has them all at the same speed, so like you'd never really notice just looking at vanilla. But um, Spring Ball restores uh, the original morph ball speed. Um, if you don't have Spring Ball, your Morph Ball rolls at half speed, which is why some of the Mock Balls are more important. Um, the other thing is, uh, acceleration. You still have bad acceleration, so it's, it still kind of looks slower to some extent, but... The biggest hard part of this is getting over this cargo properly. <laughs> oh, I dropped it. Oh, I didn't recharge. I didn't hit down in time on the oh, no. slope. Uh, it sucks for this one because this one's pretty, um, this one's pretty energy intensive. I'm going to be pretty low after this. Yeah, that was like the very last, um, chain that I, <laughs> that was the very last recharge I had to do in that chain. So I got to be careful about my health. from here on, because there's more health that has to be used for other sparks in this area as well. I don't like how that turned out. I hope I still have enough for this one. 
might be close. Okay, just get a drop from the enemy that you spark into. That works. Okay, this Kago is, again, the worst part of it, I think. There we go. <laughs> That's annoying. I was right there. Yeah, that super missile kind of teases the rest of us that can't do that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah, if you're not familiar with the mechanic too, uh, then you look at it and you're just like, how am I expected to get this exactly? Because like, there's not enough yeah, space exactly. anywhere near this. No, it's, it's, it's not clear. <laughs> not clear at all. So one thing I want to point out that uh, may, some of you may have been noticing, you'll notice that he'll often, when he does a jump, he'll crouch first. Uh, a lot of you know that in, in SM Vanilla, uh, you get a little extra jump height with the, with a crouch jump like that. Uh, it's, it's more magnified, I would say, in, in this game. It's very, very useful. Yeah. It's more important for various strats. So there is a super missile coming up that uh, I have a pretty involved strat for. Uh, it's pretty tough, so I hope I get it. If not, I have to do an infinite bomb jump backup. A backup is slower, so. Um, but basically, the strat is I lure a metery down from the ceiling, and I try to freeze it at a point where I can jump on it to climb to the top. This is like another one of the items that you're you were probably supposed to have space jump for. Oh, that might work. Okay. Ah, I'm glad I got that. It's a good one to show off. That room's really awkward. Just about every way. And now I have uh, <laughs> dumb, slow uh, rate of fire ice beam on. Yeah, you might have noticed that he's been switching between ice beam and wave beam. Because, uh, yeah, uh, another uh, prime feature. We, uh, at least not at the moment. We can't uh, stack our beams. Let's play Spark again. It's actually so slow to fire ice beam here that I just missile this cargo and stuff. Actually, you're better off with your power beam on on cargos at this point. <laughs> Even the reason I don't switch back slow. to a faster beam is I have to switch back to wave beam uh, for. Well, I'm gonna get spacer pretty soon actually, and spacer's gonna auto switch my beam anyways. Yep. And then after that, I have to equip wave for a wave gate. So. Spazer's got a nice fast firing rate. Oh, Spazer is excellent in this. It's so good. It does more damage than Wave. 
and it fires way faster. It fires at power beam speed, so... It's basically like power beam, except it actually does stuff. Yep. It's really nice to have. Yeah, I unironically best beam in this one. Except I have to actually out equip it right away. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Uh, so there's a sort of precise, I'll say awkward, I guess, power bomb placement that I want to try and do in this room. Um, it's only high enough to reveal the garden up there. I got it. Okay, good. Um, I mostly wanted it to get this floor block in this tunnel. Um, and still be high enough to... Uh, what should we call it? Um, to reveal this guardian here. Um, so this is the first guardian that gets shown to you in the game. Uh, and it's holding a power bomb so you don't think too much of it um at first it just looks like it's uh gonna give you a power bomb but when you get in its hands it does this green shape thing i did already get the one in brinstar but um this is the first one you're meant to get and so you just basically have to find all 12 of these to beat the game uh the entrance to turian has uh what i call the gatekeeper uh it's kind of a 13th statue and it tells you how many of them you have left so that is basically when you find it that's kind of your first clue as to what these things are actually for it's kind of a mystery until then so that chain was a little bit contrived i had to uh, aim a super at like the exact spot in the ceiling to be able to spark through and then this is a forced IBJ power bomb because of more flock. I don't know if we've talked about more flock tiles. No, we haven't. Yeah, so, yeah, so, so yeah, this game is full of uh, tiles uh, where uh, the uh, tile will more flock you, and uh, yeah, so you saw we saw that right there. Uh, otherwise, you might think, well, why don't you just do do wall jumps or something? You can't. <laughs> it basically can't disables your up and down inputs. <laughs> yep. Do I have anything in my reserve? Uh, that might be enough to do this. Would be pretty funny if this works. Uh, there's another spark I have to do here to get a missile, and oh, I'm just gonna ship refill. Whatever. It's not that big of a deal. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Let's do the ship refill. Yeah, okay, I've got 60 11 11, so that's correct. So I have to get this remote gate switch. Please. There we go. Yeah, Criteria is like full of these items that just kind of want you to have space jump. showing the power of spring ball once again. The short charge is kind of tight. Really? I must have been like very slightly too far mm. to the right. I don't think I've ever had the spark bonk from that position.
Okay. Oh, that was new. And there's another remote gate that I'm gonna hit here. It's not very clear what it's. Well, you see, you, if you go to that gate switch, you see a super missile on the other side of the wall, uh, with like no real indication of how to get to it. Um, but if you were to find where it actually is, which we'll get to shortly, um, you'll see the gate there with kind of no indication of how to open it. So. There's a lot of sort of fetch quest items in this. Uh, so if I time this right, I can speedball out of this and... Okay, you can actually like... If you're really precise, you can... Get the speedball to continue through that whole tunnel. Purple door, because why not? Sorry, if I didn't shoot that gate switch before, this would not be open. Spazer again here because uh, there's a bunch of Kagos in the way. Uh, Kagos are based on number of hits and not actually uh, getting their HP to zero. Each uh, each specific one Perfect. takes a, a lot of these. specific <laughs> amount of hits, um, but mostly. So this is kind of a dual purpose. I want to get this Shine Spark. This is a one try Shine Spark, but I'll explain in a second. Um, and I want to farm up my ammo a bit, so it kind of serves a dual purpose there. Uh, the reason this try spark is one try is because uh, the door that locks, the, the door actually locks behind me. Uh, it's a Fantoon lock, which um, I haven't defeated Fantoon yet. I'm on my way there, but um, I don't really know why that's a Fantoon lock, honestly. Some some of the great doors in this are just kind of because. We gotta get a uh, guardian up here somewhere. Yeah. There's also two items. Uh, so th there's there's the west and east court area you saw me go through uh, for bomb trees. It's actually uh, faster to <laughs> approach each of these separately from either direction when doing the item cleanup here. And that one definitely wants it. <laughs> That's the one I was talking about earlier with the uh, uh, spaceship screw attack. You don't even have to worry about a shine spark there. So. But we're not coming back with those items. Yeah. There is one more item in the East Courtyard I need to remember to get. I always forget this one because... Um... This is how this is laid out. Um, 
It ends up feeling like everything's done already once you get the Guardian. Coming up though is uh, my favorite sequence break in this. Uh, so it's par for the course. Uh, we have um, mandated suitless underwater. Um, so there's this whole flooded region in Criteria. Uh, it's known as Criteria Depths. And um, we can actually skip about two thirds of it. So there's this uh, gray door down here. It's uh, a Fantoon lock. Uh, so you're only supposed to have this open uh, to pass through later. Uh, but you can actually grapple one of these zoomers um, and clip through the door that way. Uh, you have to do a down input at the same time uh, to get repositioned properly. Uh, so this skips about two thirds of the depths. Uh, I still have to do a fair bit of it, but... Yeah, um, the, the, this part, I mean, the parts that get skipped are, are pretty significant, I would say. Yeah, there's like two sets of underwater ninja fighters yeah. you have to fight if you go normally. <laughs> but like the ones from Lower North here, they, they have the same amount of health as uh, late game vanilla as well. Uh, so this is the Lost Caverns. It's basically the replacement area for the wreck ship. Uh, it's very small. It's basically just this Lost Woods style maze. Uh, there are visual cues for how to solve this maze uh, in kind of the background elements of the room. Yeah, this is for, for those and of you that, that play Zelda 1, this is the... Uh... That's the Lost Woods we're talking about. That was actually not the intended solution. There's a way to break uh, the teleportation logic in the maze um, by going back and forth in that last bit of the tunnel there. Uh, it actually saves one second. I like this Fantoon fight because he gets to really take advantage of the way of uh, the fire ray of the missiles here. Yeah, so in vanilla, you will see a strategy called the Dopplering, named after the Doppler effect, where you like push missiles into Fantoon to. Um, you don't have quite the rate of fire to be able to stun lock it in vanilla, but when running forward or walking forward, you can push uh, the missiles into him uh, to get them to hit him in a pattern that stun locks him. Uh, but we have faster missile rate of fire, so we can actually just stand there and stun lock him. Uh, now the underwater chain sparks. If this, if we man, if he manages to pull this all the way out, this is one of the coolest parts of the run. I might have gotten it. This is this is like the second. Okay, I got the second. I got the. So that part marks the second half of it. I very often don't get that one. That particular one's very precise. Uh, so combined, the two halves of that save about a minute total. to make mistakes underwater because they all cost so much more time. Well, it won't matter because there is a gravity suit. <laughs> uh, so, like, there's a lot to criticize in the design of this game as far as, like, being fair to the players. Uh, but um, Getting that gravity suit in a casual playthrough is such a rewarding feeling, and I like how it's set up to draw you into this uh, 
like it just really feels rewarding after slogging through all of this. Yeah, and of course, I like to say that this this game basically doesn't have any suitless Meridia, but it's got a lot of suitless other areas. Yeah. Uh, so the very first thing we're going to do after gravity is uh, we're going to get a dumb item that it, the game wants you to have space jump for. Uh, so there is uh, an energy tank uh, that's locked behind three green gate switches. And these are pretty hard to get up to without space jump. So I want to wall jump off this one to the opposite side. Uh, I want to do the opposite side of this first because um, rather than doing the left side first, because you can actually just spring ball back over from right to left. So it saves having to do this awful wall jump one time. Of course, this, this green gate is easy to get to. Yeah, this is the one that kind of like, it tells you how yeah. the puzzle works and sets up expectations for the room. And then you get to the other ones and you're like, oh, yep, I can't much. really get to those. <laughs> uh, you can just infinite bomb jump to the other ones, but that's um, that's slower. You're not, yeah, you're not doing that in a casual place anyway. So, yeah. yeah, but I mean, like even in the, the speedrun context, it, it's slower oh, to sure. infinite bomb jump most things if you have another way available of getting it. But yeah, uh, if you were to try and do that casually, you're gonna you're gonna go for the wall jumps, I think. So a lot, a lot of like you know eighty percent routes or other categories would just be like kind of hightailing it to Meridia at this point. But um, there's a lot of um, item cleanup that can be done here. So I want to get rid of that crab in particular because this cargo is very sturdy, produces a lot of bugs, and uh, getting rid of at least one of the enemies in this room reduces. A significant amount of lag. I somehow did not get any super drops from that. I got one, I guess. That Kako bugs are very bad at dropping supers. You can get lucky with them sometimes, but... Mm -hmm. I was supposed to wall jump off the left platform there, but I kept getting stuck under it. close to we still got a few yeah still got a few more of these criteria uh the big I thing i have to do now is oh i mentioned hightailing it to meridia uh there's a third guardian we have to get yeah um any person actually gets a spike suit right after gravity to uh um skip this wave gate loop uh but we're gonna take the loop because there are some items along the path uh, oh, wow, that pit actually put me up there. Uh, so there's wall jumps like that to get up the room faster, but they're pretty difficult. I don't think I actually got it to be faster than going the normal way. So I'm going to take the opportunity to a quick wave here, because I need it for the gate coming up. to regular SM, can't do a gate glitch from the opposite side, so. Yeah, because of sub-pixel rounding. Yeah. 
and so that those super blocks you you were morph locked there and you can't uh unmorph to shoot them uh so those super blocks are kind of one way but they're also they have a blockade associated with them so um now that they're gone they're gone forever I, another fun chain. I have to sit here and farm supers first because uh, the upcoming section is very, very, very bad on your ammo. These apples are pretty decent at dropping them. I think I'll go for seven. And then we'll get to do another fun chain. <laughs> yeah, I like this chain. So this is like back in the area where Bomb Teresa was at the start of the game. And we get knee tank out of it. Most of the uh, E-Tanks in the round are <laughs> appreciated by the time I get them. They're really nice health refills. You, you use a lot of energy shine sparking everything. Wow, that scree ate my shot. <laughs> Actually, equip spacer. So I need it for Ricardo coming up. is a little bit annoying. So there's some of these uh, spots where you're expected to uh, get a spring ball jump exactly when you're rounding a corner. We talked about the, okay. the double bomb jumps that, that we had to do early in the game. So uh, once you get spring ball, uh, you have to do a combination bomb jump spring ball. Why am I not remembering where to go here? Ah, oh, that's right. If I remember correctly, the intent is for you to spring ball into a bomb jump, but I think you do it more like the bomb jump into a spring ball. Uh, a lot of other parts of the game, yeah. in the way of the speedway. And if we There's chain here, we can cabins. break the speed blocks on the floor here. Um, so the any percent route um, gets a spike suit to spark up through that floor. Um, that floor has, a, has an actor in it that 
uh, deletes the speed for once you hit it. Uh, it's specifically the third tile from the left in the bridge. So this next guardian kind of a pain if you because if, 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 you get the power bomb, so you kind of expect there's nothing more, and then of course there's this nice little hidden tunnel behind the. Behind the Kago. Yeah. There's a guardian. I've seen people miss this guardian just uh, just kind of because that power bomb is there. Oh yeah, I think I think I missed it initially because the power bomb was there. The, the Kago looks kind of suspicious, but not quite suspicious enough. And it's like he already got something out of this. Yep. Uh, so some of these get really hard to find. And I can't. I literally can't see what I'm doing. I can't even see the bomb when I lay it. It's off screen. So. <laughs> non-trivial to get out of that tunnel properly and then we just loop back through lost caverns because <laughs> that guardian basically forces us to do a loop through the area i tried to jump over that ledge but um if you try and do a jump and aim down too quickly the inputs are really similar to sparking like if you do the inputs in the wrong order you get a shrine spark instead it's kind of silly You can spring ball across this. I didn't time it right. But you can just back up with grapple. Okay, <laughs> we're going through the same room again. Uh, this is actually the intended entrance to Criteria Depths. This is the first room that he gets spit out in when going the correct direction. We have to just come here for this one missile in the wall. all for criteria at this point yep never coming back nope <laughs> uh i'm gonna safety save here because uh this so this is uh putting me next to the terrain elevator which is actually in meridia in this um but this is not intended as a first entrance into meridia you're supposed to do it far in the east of criteria closer to where i was initially uh but this puts you a lot closer to botroon um, where space jump is. So the problem with going this way is there's a grazed green gate, which I'm very surprised I got first try. Nice. But if you like, that's very scary on it's here because it's so awkward because it's raised off the ground. Um, but if you get it, it puts you much closer to bot screen to get space jump, um, which we very much want for things. Yeah, I will point out that, you know, there, there's that entrance to Meridia, which is often the first one you go to and you always know you can't go there. Um, but there's also several other ways of getting into Meridia uh, from Brinstar, and I think there's, yeah, a few, is there any from Northrap? I'm trying to remember. Uh, wow. yeah, the, I think there's the, at least the, one the cra the crate the too connects all of, like, Brinstar and Meridia and Northrap yeah. at that point. I, I know when I played, I did not go through the intended way. I went through, through I think it's from McCray 2. Uh, I mean, that's... That is, uh... I mean, yeah, you didn't go the... It, basically, the Eastern Criteria Meridia part that you get sucked into after gravity is, um, 
sort of like a Forgotten Highway esque yeah. thing. Like yep. it's, it's it does it doesn't it has some items, uh, but we can get them more efficiently later. Later, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's not completely like that, but it's there's nothing major in there that says that you have to go that particular way. Um, actually, go there in some routes. Uh, some categories just because it's the fastest way to get back to Norf here to get screw tech. Depends on whether I have screw tech already or not in that route. Screw tech is busted <laughs> in this game. <laughs> uh, really this this Hunter route is actually um, one of the few routes that gets space jump before screw tech. Um, so space jump is the prize for Vatun and. I should probably explain these gates. Uh, yeah, then. I think so. Uh, actually, I think you can explain them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you, obviously, of course, there are three uh, guardians in Meridia. Um, one of them is pretty easy to find. One of them is kind of weird. We'll get to that last one later. The one that we're working on right now, we're not going to get that guardian right now. Uh, but there's like four blue gate buttons that he has to hit. Uh, two, two of them in this area and two in, in a later area. Yeah, two from the top, uh, two, two from the <laughs> bottom. <laughs> yeah, and, and that'll unlock uh, that particular guardian. Uh, so it's just the efficient time to do the top ones is, is right now because we're on the way to Baku and we're going to not be back here. Not for a while anyways. Yeah. So Batuun is weak to bombs, but also takes decent damage from Spazer. Yeah, sadly, in a lot of runs, we can just use screw attack and just kill very, very quickly. <laughs> yeah, it, it is weak to screw attack. Um, which um, is a lot of the reason that some routes uh, try to get screw attack right away. Yep. Uh, getting screw attack uh, before spaceship requires a small, uh, a small chain spark. It's possible to get a uh, screw attack before even gravity suit, um, but it's risky. Um, if you fail the chain to get screw attack um, without gravity, there's a good chance you die because your only way out is through lava lake. And any percent does that. So. Um, screw attack is actually also a movement item in this because it launches you forward really far. Um, which is kind of a throwback to uh, Screw Attack in the Prime series because that's its main function is to cross gaps. Yeah, it takes a little bit of getting used to. It's also like like when I get it, um, because it it's forward movement speed is so crazy um, and you, it's not something you'd want to be using all the time. Uh, it actually kind of uh, toggles on and off depending on whether you held a run when you started your spin jump. Uh, so it's like kind of turn it's kind of toggleable at will to that degree, but also that adds a um, really difficult element of controlling it. I almost got the thread the needle. That was close enough. I just didn't get under the thing. Jump feels really good in these watery rooms. Um, there's some sand physics that we're, we're gonna see that it's less. <laughs> so there's me breaking a breaking a tube and just being able to run straight out. Um, the flag did get set, but because I don't lose control of Samus in redesign when I break tubes, uh, it's just <laughs> set the flag and get out before you have to watch the cutscene. Uh, this is a nice little, um, oops, this is a nice little speedball required item. Uh, this is a two super pack because it's in a Chozo ball. We get it in any percent as well, just because it's a really good source of supers. Uh, I can actually put my waving back on. I actually have to have it on for this door shot to work. Oops. 
That's a pretty tough door shot, because, like, um, your the speed and the angle you're running at um, gets uh, added to uh, the original speed of the beam, so you're able to push beams with run speed, basically. Um, so there's a particular, like, uh, angle of slope that you have to be on for that door, for that shot to hit the door, because otherwise it goes at the wrong angle relative to the rest of the room. And now we're going to leave uh, Meridia and head down to uh, Lorna. Okay, so we're going to take the underpass no. here. Uh, this is actually where the intended Lauren Orfair entrance is, uh, the room that I just passed. Uh, but... Um, we have a faster way. <laughs> yeah, back way is faster. Nice gate shot. I try to get that gate shot by bonking my head off uh, the ceiling in a particular spot. And of course, the game uh, intends for you to go kill Dragon before doing this, but uh, it's just more efficient, especially with the uh, Korean entrance in Meridia, to go down and do uh, the lower and Fair and some of the Guardian and item cleanups uh, yeah. before we do that. Dragon doesn't really lock anything except for uh, uh, two Guardians and um, the beam combo item, which yeah. are not like immediately required to have for lower and Fair, so. You can do these in whenever order, and it's it's better to do a route that gets you screw attack earlier, and it also just, like, because Meridia has terrain in it, it's better to end on that, too. Okay, there's... If you run at a very precise speed, uh, you can actually get the jump straight into more from that tunnel, but it requires a very particular amount of jump height. Uh, the space jump by itself actually affects your horizontal speed too. Um, Not as much as screw attack, but uh, your horizontal speed is like really, really stunted when you do spin jumps in this, and space jump kind of restores them to more or less normal. Um, space jump also, uh, space jump without screw attack specifically is the um, the highest acceleration form of movement in the game. Uh, screw attack actually has a bit of startup time to it before you go full speed. This E-tank I'm getting here is really out of the way. I call this one Storage Cavern because it just kind of reminds me of that room in Prime. In Prime it has a missile though. Yeah, I could have gotten it here initially with the grapple beam, but it's much faster to do this with space jump. Yeah, this is actually, you know, I can actually have space jump here and still be efficient because it was in a direction that made sense to go. I just had to mainly so deal without it for uh, criteria. Yeah, I, I find that one room with just the tunnel that you go through it is kind of a cool looking room too. Yeah, it's it's like it's overlaid um behind another room yep uh it's one that we actually skipped because of the gate glitch that i did uh way earlier and when we were getting grapple these tunnels are hard to get into with your increased fall speed because there are there are some like particular position starting and ending positions where um because of your fall speed in this you actually don't have any valid frames for um you're at the right position to enter the tunnel um this is another item i could have gotten earlier but yep. um it's much faster doing to do this, this maze with, yeah. with spring ball oh yeah i was doing this with bombs it's slow and annoying and i actually timed it because like um 
this you can use this maze to get out of the top where that gate is and it saves two door transitions um if you're coming out from the first grapple trip um and so i timed it and despite the fact that it saves two toward to, uh, two door transitions to get this out on the first trip it's still not faster <laughs> to get it without spring ball Uh, so there's a uh, chain spark that you'd set up here to get screw attack from this alcove um, if you're trying to get it early without space jump. Um, and it's scary in other categories because um, you have to get the chain going into the alcove, which is um, uh, a one tile uh, height to get it to work. You have one tile when you see to get it to work. And if you miss it, then... Um, you have to jump in the lava lake to get out, uh, which is and, fine and if you, you have gravity, yeah, but if you... I, I, I think... I want to say you've been able to do it with with the various suits, but it's... Yeah, it's, but there, it's I, tight. <laughs> I had to, I had to uh, map out strats for getting yeah, out with just very enough, and it takes a decent amount of tanks. Still don't want to fail it, even with the backup there. <laughs> Uh, so there's this, uh, this is where the grapple save is, but, um, there is a speed booster shortcut that actually gets you back to part of where the grapple gauntlet spits out. Uh, this is the guardian I could have gotten earlier, um, but with wave and all my movement items, it's much faster to just get it now. Uh, I also pre-opened the door at the far right of the room. Uh, there's a shrine spark I'm going to be doing, uh, to chain far into the the room to the right of here to get another item so so one nice thing about this room because the guardians is is hidden behind power bomb blocks so you know you come in here you think the power bombs all you're getting uh, if you hit the map and you haven't and you've been to the tile that the guardians in whether you've revealed it or not and whether you've activated it or not it'll show on the map uh, a, a little icon to show there's a guardian so that one's not really that hard to find if you find the power bombs yeah, it's also like if you lay the power bomb there, um, and you, then you'll reveal it. So the, basically, um, the very first guardians you're intended to find, a bunch of those have cool little design quirks that like manage to successfully hit most players into finding out that they're a thing and activating them and such. Uh, some of the, the later ones are just evil though. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a couple in Burnstar that, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so secondly, because I don't benefit as much from doing that Shrine Spark uh, over to the left, uh, I go up here and get this item on the second loop instead. Uh, this is what I call the Indiana Jones missile, and th there's one that's like um, a vine, a grapple swinging one people call in Randomizer, which is actually, that one already had a name because that room is called the Pantry. Um, this is the true Indiana Jones missile, in my opinion. <laughs> um, I've heard, yeah. I've heard the one in vanilla called the Tarzan missile, which like also kind of applies because you're swinging on a on a vibe. Well, the room is pantry. Like, the strat is Indiana Jones. I guess Tarzan sure. would work too. <laughs> I, I I have heard that one before, but like this one is just like there's <laughs> there's a boulder that you have to. <laughs> like, uh, there's nothing more Indiana Jones than that boulder. That's <laughs> yeah. Um. So the, like the puzzle there is um, the uh, the boulder actually breaks the enemy, the enemy breakable blocks, uh, but it will break on the power bomb blockade if you don't get rid of it first. So that's the puzzle to that room. And I am saving here because we're about to do the um, <laughs> we're about to do the backdoor lower door fair, um, which I know this saves four minutes in any percent because there's a lot of crap in. Uh, front of Lauren Orfer you no longer have to do. Um, we still have to do some of the front for items, but it's still faster to backdoor it. Um, especially if that putting us near all these other items in East Norfair. Um, so there is a soft lock potential in this trick. So I'm saving to uh, try and mitigate that. So we're back in the grapple room. I uh, can do a ceiling clip. That ceiling clip pretty much requires high jump. This might look a little bit silly. 
Um, yeah, so this loop looks easy. Um, this is very difficult. Uh, so basically, this we have another a uh, some more flock tiles here, and we need to try and avoid them. And there's a, a collision oscillator that we need to abuse. And every other tile, it's it, so sometimes you just don't get it because you just don't get the right uh, frame with the right side of the collision oscillator. Uh, so he needs to get into this spot. Um, yeah, and to be able to avoid, unmorph and shoot a super. Yeah, he needs to be able to un yeah, unmorph, shoot the super. There we go. This is intended as an exit to, to lower north, but not an entrance. <laughs> there we go. So it looks kind of silly when he's doing it, but it's actually a very difficult trick. That was pretty good for, for Ray to getting it, I would Yeah, that, that really wasn't bad. This area puts us fairly close to Ridley. Uh, for still... those of you that maybe have seen Benny do his RBO run uh, with the, what we always often call the taco tank or the task tank, it's, it's kind of similar to that in terms of the oscillator. Yeah, and uh, like, so basically, um, the the more flock tile you're trying to jump over, um, to get the spring over it, you actually have to be in contact for, uh, for one frame. And you just hope that um, the collision oscillator is just not checking its collision on that particular frame, which is a 50-50. So the collision oscillator, um, it checks whether Samus is colliding with um, the tile to the left of her and the tile to the right of her on alternating frames for collision checks. Um, that's just to say processing power rate, I guess. But yeah, so it's like um, you can do that input perfectly and there's still a 50% chance that it won't work. And you can also see screw tech in action. Uh, some of these like more um, cramped rooms are maybe not the best. Uh, Uh, display of it. Uh, this so that actually kind of looks frantic when when you're. Because the you're movement in this is very check. frantic. It's like <laughs> yeah. really. Um, and it's like it's hard to control because um, it's possible to like mess up and not have been holding run on a jump that you thought you were. So you'll go if your screw attack doesn't activate because the game thinks you weren't holding run with that jump you'll get a very different amount of distance than you expect to get. Um, so there's a gate glitch here just to skip uh, a run around in a ninja pirate fight before Ridley. Yep. Uh, I am actually going to save before this fight just because um, Ridley's body does a lot of damage in this fight because one of Ridley's weaknesses is actually a, the pseudo screw tech. Um, Pseudo screw attack does a ton of damage to Ridley, but to compensate, um, his body damage is tripled. So it's very um, costly to get hit by him. Yeah, it's nice because though that um, because we have to hold run to use the regular screw attack, you don't have to turn off screw attack to do a pseudo screw here. So the super the, the firing rate of the, of the missiles is really nice here. Uh, yeah, it it actually makes the the missiles more efficient. Yep. The supers again really slow. You see, he's trying to do the pseudos at the end of the fight. Yeah, more or less. There we go. I I did two pseudos. He wasn't quite dead, so I wanted to get some last supers in. But yeah, like, I also want to point out. Oh, go ahead. Uh, you just saw my health go down a whole bunch every time that I touched him. So <laughs> that's the danger in that. Yeah, actually, this is a good time to mention because like this E tank is part of that. Like, I really like that there's a big, there's a lot of that the lower and orphan here is a uh, call to uh, the original Metroid, in including that E tank where you have the uh, what looks like is going to be lava or in this case acid, uh, but it's turned out to be solid. You can go get that E tank at the back. Uh, so this area is kind of a sort of a contained boss rush. Um, you're locked in until you fight Fiddly, and then one door opens down here uh, for you to go fight Gulp Terizo. 
and if you've seen the the cheese strat where you could it's an ai exploit where you just pin him against the wall um it, it was uh attempted to take this out of redesign by uh having these uh spike lined floors um they're covered by enemy breakable blocks but if you manage to get him in the corner where he doesn't break the block in front of him you can still do the cheese strat by just standing on the very edge um, so I switched to Spazer because it actually does more damage than Wave in redesign. And, it's, <laughs> and of, of course, uh, the bad part, of course, we don't have Plasma yet. Don't have uh, yeah. the ability to shoot multiple beams at once, so it's a little slower than the fight in, in vanilla. But GT yes. locks Plasma, so... <laughs> yeah. Uh, are we sure that it's, it's GT and not Ridley? Because, like... Um, I don't remember. I... I, I like essentially you're trapped in this area anyway, so yeah, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter, you but kill both of them before you can go. Get the door it. is either a Ridley or a GT door, but I don't, I didn't really bother to check which one. Also, your um, your charge shots, uh, you need 80 frames to charge instead of 60. So that's like, <laughs> um. I'll, I'll say this hack has a lot of like anti quality of like stuff to make it harder. It's <laughs> one of them. And we got a PB there instead of a super missile. Yeah, I I don't like getting that PB before the start of the fight just because um, it's really easy to mess up the setup for the cheese if you miss it. Um, uh, supers aren't used on GT because they just fire way too slow. It's like he has that mechanic where he um, catches um, he catches supers and throws them back at you. Um, and because of the rate of fire, you can only get um, one super in between every catch instead of four. So it's not ideal. So this is this part of the loop is behind a Ridley door, so um, and it hides some items. Uh, actually, it's just one item. It's this is a gonna get rid of this ceiling disc here because it can cause issues later. Um, there's this whole like shine spark puzzle, basically, to unlock a two pack of missiles. Oh, I didn't actually do the shine spark part of it. Would help if I did that. <sighs> this tunnel's so long, it's actually faster to set up a mock ball and spring ball through the whole thing. Again, another one of those. Let's have this. Uh, have a two missile pack behind our really difficult trick. That's not difficult. It's just like this one's just involved. There's there's just okay, a lot of steps to this one. It's not really hard. But there there are there are cases where that applies for sure. point we're mostly going backwards through uh, <laughs> the the whole Lauren Orfair trek that we're supposed to come in with. Just to clean up all the items here. This room is another one. Yeah, this one's a really awful <laughs> room. Um, in the middle of those 
platform, so there's a hole that you can fall through and you end up in the acid. And, and you're no longer to the point where you're likely to die out of it because you, you've got a gravity suit, you've got, well, at least in this category or a normal run through. Because yeah. you've got a gravity suit and spaceship and all that good stuff. But uh, uh, it's just an, and one of those annoying rooms in, in that situation. <laughs> so. Any percent? Yeah, with the, with the very suit down there. Yeah. But we don't get, like, this plasma beam, we don't even pick up in any percent because we just don't have the. You can't survive it. And if you're going to do lower and warfare first, you, there's just no way to get this plasma beam. So it just sits there. Yeah. One of the big, um, one of the big attractions to doing lower and warfare early in uh, any percent is. Uh, actually, I don't remember which item I need right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, plasma this... should break. The, the, the newly coined super hate shine spark. Uh, I, I didn't have enough time for that one. We'll see in a second why. <laughs> I We, why we, we won't really that. see it, honestly. No, um, I guess we don't. Yeah, this, okay. this room is called Super 8 <laughs> because um, any intended path through forwards, Lord or Fair, um, there is a. Actually, I'm going to shoot at the bottom one. That is a eight super blockade you have to fire them all straight down um if you fire the if you hit the bottom one that deletes the whole blockade when you reload the room uh because you're intended to hit it from the top um but it's supposed to be an ammo check it's supposed to be like you need eight supers to progress the lower warfare um and back before we had the backdoor method available um it was a pretty scary ammo check because like a lot of the any percent rounds at that point had like nine and it's like if you missed one at some point or if you just didn't get enough from farming throughout uh the ln doors you opened it could turn out really badly but yeah so i the other day I, or actually today i was just like hey i <laughs> should call this room the super eight i can't believe i never thought of that before but yeah those are all gone because i shot up the bottom one And it's hard to get the first one, so then you have to kind of stand on top because you get the. I'm not sure if that's a Fune or a Namahe. It's a Namahe. Namahe is the, the, so the, the dangerous the one. one. <laughs> yes, that's the one that you can't kill. <laughs> yeah. And so it's try it's firing at you as you're trying to angle down. It's basically force super. damage. Yep. While you're trying to hit it. All right. So the appeal of doing Lord Norfair early in any percent is uh, the whole point of. Uh, even fighting Ridley in GT is because it, it unlocks a Guardian down here. Um, and it helps, like, with... It cuts out so much backtracking if you're able to do Lower Norfair when you're in the bottom half of the planet. Um, before going up and getting gravity and space jump and all that. Um, uh, so in any percent, uh, we have to lava dive to this Guardian, and that takes, like, almost all of the health that we have at the time. Another reason not to get plasma, although yeah, I don't. Th I, th I think plasma might still not be viable. Um, even if you didn't have to do this as well, I mean, it's it's really like even if you had enough uh, health to get plasma, it'd be really slow to get through the lava. Yeah, that too. But this you have to do so. So Spazer is like, j just like um, Vanilla, Spazer ends up being the, the hero of um, New Route. <laughs> <laughs> so more backwards stuff. So I want to lay this power bomb high because it um, will take care of another blockade on either side of this wall. Uh, not able to fully clear out the tunnel here with just one, but turns out it's still faster to lay them in that configuration. This space jump cooldown really kills in this hack sometimes when you're not in water. benefits of going back is um for the most part you can avoid a ton of the required ammo checks and door caps and stuff there in the way 
Uh, that one, the routing just doesn't work out to where we can skip that one for Hundo, but in general, it works out decently. Ah, oh, this room's a potential death trap for new players. <laughs> Although it's low enough you could actually get out if, if things are going badly. Um, not with three tanks, <laughs> they have enough. Yeah, so this is kind of like a maze where the acid is slowly rising. Um, the correct answer is the metal path, which lets you shine spark at a lower north fair. Um, this is actually, there are many ways to exit lower north um, there's one actually immediately below that, but we have to take this one out because uh, it is the only way to get the power bomb in this tunnel. And now we're back in the Magor Transport Tunnel A, which is the E-Tank that I keep forgetting to grab. Yeah, the, 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 in that room before, uh, it, it, it's actually, actually better that it's acid because uh, you can't shine spark through lava. Uh, right, but you can through yeah. acid, so so you do get extra time um, if you screw up, uh, and the, and it's a very it's pretty slow that acid rising. Yeah, it's just mainly like if you get lost is the main danger. It's just yeah, like, yeah. It's it's very possible to get lost in that room. So so now we're back at the North Rail Elevator. Um, uh, we have gravity in this area. There's like <laughs> these uh, items submerged in lava. We can now get. Um, There's some more of these shine spark items that are valuable as well. Like this one, if you're not, uh, th this one is hard to figure out. Um, I know you had a lot of trouble figuring out how to get this item. Yeah, I got this one though. <laughs> you did get it. Um, but it's like, cause that door, um, that door is a Krokemeyer lock on the top side and a, I think a gold Teresa lock on the bottom. Um, once you get shut down here, like you, you can bomb and see that there are speed blocks in the wall, but there's absolutely yep. no indication of how you're supposed to break them. And it's hard to put the two and two together that you're supposed to spark from the top when the door locks on you and you don't have access to the room to think about it. Yeah, I think I got it after uh, Lower Norfair. So you had the, the ability to go back through if you messed up. will be the so right now we're just going through and picking up the rest of the stuff that's in Norfair so we never have to again never have to come back here again <laughs> and we'll get a, we'll get the last Norfair guardian on the way One of the next items that I'm going to get is in a, uh, um, there's like a sort of, I forget if this is a sign or a cosine room, I think it's a cosine, um, it's cosine. but it's got, well, I, I, that's what I wrote on the thing, but I don't know if I was correct. <laughs> um, okay, it, it is a cosine room. Um, I was saying, it starts at top, so I would call it cosine. <laughs> 
or I should say the the, the left side is at the top. <laughs> but yeah, you, you can't. Uh, the lava will eat uh, a stored shrine spark, so um, you have to time your run through the room so that um, the lava's tide is out of the way when you're charging it. Um, there's a really cool threat on the way out that. Um, uh, I don't even know where to begin to explain this threat. Um, so there, there's a way to get temporary blue suit uh, that normally requires you to wait out the Shrine Spark timer, but um, if I use X-Ray, um, I can avoid having to wait it out. It's just a faster way to... Um, ow. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I tried. Um, so this this particular column of blocks are all speed blocks. So if you get the blue suit effect and you can keep it, then you can fall all the way down that column. And yeah, the best example uh, in oh, vanilla nice. is actually in in any percent old route uh, in the rock ship. You'll see some people will use it. Uh, to kill the uh, all the pirates in the not the pirates the, the key hunters in the attic. the attic yeah kind of a neat strat there we don't get to see it that much anymore because because uh, most of the top runners are using uh, new route and you don't have a speed booster there I'm really happy I found a way to make X-ray useful for that strat even though I missed it this time. Um, we we'll get one more. We'll, X-ray will, will shine in, in, in another. Yeah, but that's spot. that's free. That's not exciting. I know. <laughs> I, yeah, and, and, it, and people, and if you've ever played Rando, you people people that play Rando see that one. Yeah. So this is yeah. this is the area that Speed Booster Escape happened in. That's basically post-apocalyptic. Uh, it's just kind of a cool touch. So you go back there once you have gravity, and um, you can get another item there. Uh, you can actually like see the item. Your hint for it is that. Um, you can see there's an item below there, um, beneath the floor that you can't reach uh, before the speed booster escape has occurred. So um, it's a pretty cool touch. Uh, this back area, it's basically, I think, this, is this where you get missiles in uh, Nestroid? Well, there, well, I mean, there's, there's several rooms. So, no, there are several rooms like that, and, and I think most of them have two or three missile packs uh, in in the original and. Yeah, so that's definitely a callback to some of the uh, Norfair rooms in uh, in the original. Yeah, um, the other side of that room actually has um, like kind of the the trademark um, like bomb through the whole wall tunnel thing in Norfair in Metroid One, and yep. the other side is the uh, Ridley face um, that is actually an exit from Lower Norfair. Um, and doing the bounce there, I was able to uh, actually break the morph lock in this tunnel, but. Then I failed the crumble jump, so I have to go do it again. Um, this is another tunnel that uh, basically... <sighs> so you're supposed to be more flocked here, um, and you're supposed to do a horizontal bomb jump or a diagonal bomb jump out of like the inside of that tunnel. Please. Um, which is tricky to do. So the first way I learned how to do this is by actually skipping the Morph Lock tile. Um, I did since learn how to do it with that, but it's a bit faster if you get the Morph Lock skip because you can uh, jump through some of those areas that want you to like bomb jump. Um, so now we're actually finally going for uh, the first PV pack that we get in any percent. I call these Sigma PVs because uh, um, in in, a, in the SM community we call like generally call like the first pack of something that we were intended to get the alpha, like alpha missiles, alpha PVs, um, and then the first ones that are right next to them are usually like beta missiles or beta PVs. Um, this one is just kind of like an like an oddball first one that I. <laughs> Um, felt like Sigma was appropriate for it. Um, but yeah, so I used sequ uh, I used space jump to um, be able to jump up past this uh, crumble block with the super block passage in the wall. Um, if you don't have space jump, um, 
you more or less can't go up that way. I actually did kind of figure out a way recently, but it's stupid. Um, <laughs> but there's this giant maze in this area. Uh, that's a bunch of um, horizontal bomb jump death traps. Uh, and that's how we get the first power bombs in any percent without killing Crocomire, which, again, is important for early speed booster and room state shenanigans and stuff. Um, any percent is also a really cool run uh, for much different reasons. I know at least, but well, one of the things I know you've told me uh, with the Hundo Rod is that uh, of your uh, runs on YouTube, it is the Hundo Rod that <laughs> that uh, gets the most hits. So yeah, probably because people want to know where everything is. It's, 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 or, it's, you're gonna you're gonna miss not stuff. even oh, like just where like so there 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 are maps like you can look up maps. People have made maps yeah, of where true. everything is, um, but for this hack especially how to get all the items is a big challenge and some of the items you just look at and you're scratching your head and you're just like how yeah, exactly oh, yeah. does it expect yeah, me to like do this the super missile in uh, in criteria yeah <laughs> yeah so there's some value in like seeing how somebody actually gets all of them and like not even necessarily the intended way but um actually i kind of do want to do a walkthrough series for this game of like um how you're supposed to get some of these items and how to learn how to do some of this stuff. Because, um, like, there's some stuff I show in the speedrun that is just like, yeah, I don't actually recommend that you do this if you're just playing. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. I do need to farm some PBs here because we're like criminally loyal at this point. <laughs> it's actually crazy. Like this happens in vanilla too, but um, in Hundo routes, you're picking up a ton of items. You're picking up so much ammo and you just have none of it by the end of the game because you're using all of it throughout the route. And these things just refuse to. I have gotten like 15 supers because the. Oh my goodness. Please. <laughs> these are supposed to be good at dropping power bombs, I swear. I guess I'm not going to have any ammo issues for the rest of the game, but like, wow. Oh, also, I should note, this room is extremely laggy because, um... To allow for there being more rooms in the game total, um... One trick that Drew used is he crammed multiple rooms into the same room header. So the a room header is basically like, um... Uh... A little blurb of data that's like um, where the what region the room is in, what the room's properties are, etc. It's basically what defines a room in the game. So by putting multiple rooms in a single room header, they're all loaded at once. Uh, they're all slightly apart from each other on the map, so you can't see the, the other rooms from where you are. Uh, so it gives the illusion of them being separate rooms, but technically they're all one big room. And we can tube clip here because you can just seal and clip in Super Metroid. So, actually I actually like that we don't have to blow up that tube because it lets you run through it faster um, without having to lose your platforming. Now we'll finish our Brinstar cleanup. Um, there's actually a few points for some categories, like particularly RVO, uh, which is a crazy category in this, um, where we make use of um, we're able to make use of the fact that Drew put multiple rooms into each room. Oh wait, this is the wrong way. Um, we're able to make use of that uh, by x-ray climbing from one loaded room to another room. And because they're technically the same room, it is technically inbounds to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so. And some of the, some of the doors uh, share are, are shared as well. Oh yeah, because he, he, he was like, he was running out of. Um, <laughs> He he ran out of um, door IDs at one point, so he had to make some of them. Yeah, my my favorite is when when I got to Botswoon, uh It was not a gray door for to leave. It was a blue door. So, like if you fail it, you can just leave and come back. Yeah, Botswoon <laughs> shares its door ID with actually a purple door that was supposed to be in the way on my way out of that lava lake to the Prince Star Two. So I save ammo from having already killed Botswoon at the time that I'm doing this. 
this so this room is supposed to be the first one in Red Prince Star. Um, and there's just some ammo here. But it's good to only be doing these rooms at a time where we can actually get all the stuff that's here. That one is too far. <laughs> I forgot the layout of this room. Yeah, there's also going to be, you know, a couple couple guardians we're going to do here, which is kind of weird because the other three sections or areas of the game have kind of a west, middle, and east guardian, but for whatever reason, Burnstar doesn't follow that pattern, and we're going to get a couple guardians within a few room, two rooms of each other. They're, they're within literally one room of each other. Is it one room? The, yeah. The two guardians of us and Red Burnstar. Um, they're both pretty big rooms. So you might not realize it's one room apart, sure. but it is. This one is the Spike Guardian. For obvious reasons. <laughs> I, I, had to, I had to think really hard to think of a name for this one. <laughs> I, um, think, I don't remember. I think this is the one I found more easily. The like, spot is kind of evil. It, it really entices you into this back spot, like especially if there, there's like a little uh, kind of hidden tunnel you can use to get here um, without going through the water. Um, mm. And it lets you like kind of peek that there's a whole bunch of spikes here, but if you try to survive them, you can't. These are actually all, um, they are air spikes, which normally do weak spike damage, but they were edited to do strong damage, which is, um, 60 base. So, um, with Varia, they would do 30, which normally air spikes would do eight with Varia, but these are a lot stronger. Yeah. I mean, this, the fact that there's like a tunnel through those spikes kind of like, I mean, at this point, when you've done, you know, a three tank hell run and, a, and grapple gauntlet, like... I hate a, this missile so tunnel? much, by the way. Oh my god, <laughs> this missile is so obnoxious. This is, yeah, I, yep. My goodness. Where is that? <laughs> uh, so, fun there fact about the these are uh, technically called Samus Eaters, but a lot of the community calls them Vile Plumes after the Pokemon that looks similar. Um, this this theory is such garbage. Oh my goodness. Um, so, fun fact about those is uh, the ceiling ones will eat you for twice as long. As the floor ones. So when I'm there, like my primary concern is don't get eaten by the ceiling one. Um and actually the ceiling one, if you get caught in the ceiling one, it just spits you out into the floor one anyways. <laughs> so yeah, it's really bad. A, yeah. And here's another guardian that if you if you get the missile, uh the map will tell you that the guardian's there. Forgot to implement Spike Raker. I can't wait for Exfusion to come out. <laughs> okay, there is a power bomb I need in here. So th this is I call this room the hallway. So it's kind of an expanded version of the hallway in Vanilla. Uh, this is where we first came into Red Brinstar, the unintended path, so to speak. Um, and there was like this power bomb blockade that we were able to go through a secret tunnel underneath. Um, this is we have power bombs. We don't have to do it that way anymore, which is nice. I believe that's it for 
for Brinstar now. Yeah, it should be it for everywhere except Meridia. That missile is really easy to forget. Wow. There, there, there is one exception, but uh, we're not going to count that one for now. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. I already got this. What am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> There's so many items in this. Uh, I am supposed to go this way, though. I This is the path to Dragon. I'm not used to having this many supers. Usually, like, when you're farming for power bombs there, you just get the power bombs and you run. I got, like, 15 supers before I got even yeah, one. No, that was... you really did. That was crazy. Just, just goes to show, if you need supers, you're getting power bombs. If you need power bombs, you're getting supers. The drop logic is actually a little bit broken in uh, redesign, because um, he made the chances for like the separate um, possible ammo you could get out of it. He made the chances for some of the enemies add up to more than 100%, which... Um, yeah, like, to be fair, it wasn't really clear back in the day that you weren't supposed to do that. Um, but the fact that they add up to more than 100% breaks some of the drop logic in that, like, um, if your chance for some of the stuff that... Because, um, like, generally the drops, uh, it filters out um, stuff that you're full on. Um, so with that logic in mind, if the chance to get... Um, certain drops like health or missiles if the chance to get some of them is too high it can actually push um the percentage chances for the other ones off the table so like like let's say that um it's listed as like there's a, there's an enemy that has like a 70% chance to drop energy and a 70% chance to drop missiles. If it can drop both energy and missiles at the time you're shooting it, it's never going to give you anything else. Um, there's some kind of... Uh, this comes into play more in any percent, not so much in Hondo, but there's some instances in any percent where um, we could sort of use that to manipulate the drops that we want from some enemies, but more often it works against the player, I think. that Dragon's supposed to lock is the beam combo, which um, it's the replacement for Spring Ball, and what it does is it lets you finally stack your beams again. Uh, you're supposed to... Okay, I got it. So there's this gate here that's protected by invisible shutters in the ceiling, and the way you're supposed to open this gate button is to go kill Dragon to open a grey door elsewhere. Go several rooms out of your way, um, and go through a really long bomb tunnel that you might be able to barely see in the ceiling. Um, so you're supposed to do, like, basically you go multiple minutes out of the way to get beam combo after killing Dragon. Um, but since the, so the thing that's protecting the gate button is a shutter enemy, which are basically like, they're like kind of the moving buttonless gates kind of thing. They're, those are technically enemies. Um, and they're generally invulnerable to weapons. Um, but enemies kind of don't process when they're off screen, um, unless you specifically set them to. And there's a way we can, uh, if we just get the camera to despawn the shutter enemy that's in the way, we can get a wave shot through. That room he just space jumped and screw attacked her. 
Uh, you're not intended to have screw tech, screw tech there, so if you notice there was a center line where the sand wasn't going through, you're supposed to do two space jumps, one, this is the, the one, uh, the second one being on that center line so you can get across. Uh, so with the screw attack, uh, much easier because you have the extra horizontal distance. And here we were going to see the uh, x-ray come in handy. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to have beam combo for this and also plasma. Yeah, th those of you that have ever done a randomizer or watched a randomizer have seen this Dracon kill. Uh, I've done this Dracon kill. So the, the any percent fight for this is more interesting because Dragon is weak to bombs. And that's the best weapon that we have at that point in the route. Uh, there's some pretty good strats to like um, the, the opening bombs uh, for the first suit can be timed pretty well with the music uh, for the other ones. Uh, there's some semi-reliable strats to get a whole bunch in during goo phases. Okay, so E tank count is correct so far, at least. Not much <laughs> I can say. Okay. Uh oh, I forgot the super next to Kraid too. Um, I can get it um, after I'm done hitting this gate switch. So. Oh yeah. Okay. I moved yeah, the super there because, like, I wanted to get it done earlier so I wouldn't forget it, but <laughs> it's fine. I'll, I'll try to remind you, but yeah, this is this is the, uh, or was the... D this the is a, this the... is a Dragon lock, <laughs> so, um, and it, this is a remote gate blocking the Guardian, so, um, we have to kill Dragon to get that open. Oh yeah, this is the, this is the easier of the well, of the easiest i guess of the guardian yeah like the, the game kind of leads you right to this one that's this not hard to yeah. find it's it's yeah, it's contrived good. but it's not hard the, the other two like we haven't quite finished have yeah we haven't quite finished all the the gates honestly i think on the this... one oh yeah and then yeah that I, I don't know which one i would consider harder like the one with the four gates or the one that you, you have no reason to no that's we'll a, see in that's, a second. A, that's the same are, are you talking about the tube no, I was talking about the one that's behind uh, Ridley or GP. Yeah, the one behind the tube. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, one. yeah. That's that's specifically a Ridley tube. Yeah, like that, I, like, I don't that know which trigger one's makes harder. absolutely no sense, <laughs> but it doesn't. But I, I was gonna say I don't know which one's harder to figure out the the one with the gates or the one with one there, behind Ridley. There's a lot of really arcane event triggers in this game. Uh, a lot of them are more relevant for any percent and RBO. Which, um, I just said we needed to kill Dragon to get this Guardian, but you can actually get all of the Guardians without defeating any of the major bosses. Um, there's also a way to escape the escape. Um, so, uh, we actually have an RBO category. I haven't run it yet, because it's ridiculously hard, but, um, you can beat Mother Brain first, and then do all the four bosses. Um... The way that you get this guardian is by x-ray climbing uh, from a different room, which is pretty easy. You just or you x-ray climb past the gate that's in the way. But to get out, you can't x-ray climb downwards. It only goes up. So to get out, you have to x-ray climb into another room, uh, which is the Mokshroid Cavern Missile, which we'll be seeing uh, shortly from, you know, properly inbounds and stuff. Uh, <laughs> but the crazy thing about skipping Dragon to an RBO is um, there's a Morph Lock tile at that missile, and we actually do a... Um, we actually do a Crystal Flash um, <laughs> uh, clip to reposition to avoid the Morph Lock tile. It's really insane. Okay, we've gotten the the east the, the cray tube one. Uh, yeah, I, I got it. It's 
actually the, the crystal oh. flash clip spits you out into this room. You can't see anything because like the camera's stuck in the other room below. But if you look at the map, uh, the room with the guardian is directly below this one. They're technically the same room. I, I found it really sad that that one's only a two because this is not this spot in the wall. Not obvious. <laughs> yeah, not really. There, there's a tiny graphical hint for it. It's actually kind of similar to the the hint, the graphical hint for the Mama Turtle missile in Vanilla, mm, yeah. which I, I know a lot of people insist isn't there, but that tile is slightly off color. Yeah, I, I think it is slightly off color. Nice. I uncentered the door though, so that probably didn't save time. <laughs> uh, so there's a chain spark that you're supposed to do uh, to hit this blockade out of the way. There's another super pack down here. Um, but if you have that room available, so that super I just got earlier, it's locked behind a droid number. Um, if you have that unlocked room available after killing Dragon, you can just use that to do your shrine spark instead of doing the chain. Just kind of silly, but I guess it's like, you know, there. I, I guess there's some reward for killing Dragon here. Um, this chain, though, I this was the place where I learned to chain spark and redesign. It was like actually one of the one of the best spots where the game like actually kind of teaches it to you in a way. So next should be... Oh, Meridia Reserve should be next. Yep, that's what I have. Okay. So this is another Chain Spark. It's a pretty short one. Uh, do you know anything is that... I, yeah, okay. This one's tough to coordinate. Um, you have to shoot open that door and... To do so, it's very tempting to jump beneath it and aim up or angle up. But those inputs, if you do them midair, they will make your shrine spark go off. So this one's pretty awkward. So we're going to see a screen shake here. This is a really arcane trigger. This basically means the tube in this room is broken. I didn't really go over this tube at all because it never really showed up on screen. Um, but yeah, there's this tube kind of blocking the way up this room, making you go ascend up a different room. And, and try as you might, you can't power bomb it. <laughs> yeah, you can't power bomb tubes from the outside and redesign. They patched it to make sure you can't do that. Um, Specifically, probably it's funny gorgeous. thing, you can actually moonfall into the tube and break it from inside. Like, it actually functions <laughs> like a normal tube, but... Um, so this is the Ridley tube, and it locks a Guardian. So, like, it's it's a dead end on both sides. There's no way to get into it, aside from actually clipping into it. Um, actually, I think the memus were made uh, to die instantly to Ice Beam, specifically so you couldn't clip into the tube. They, they do not freeze, they die instantly to Ice Beam. But yeah, I mean, when you're looking for for your Viridia Guardians, your extra ones, like there's nothing to tell you to run across the one specific spot to get the earthquake to happen. So the two breaks with it. I mean, once that happens, then it's like, okay, let's see what's what's changed. Yeah, it, it, it checks for Ridley being dead uh, when you're in one of the adjacent rooms. Um, so like you you will it will open 
sooner or later, but uh, most casual players are just going to be like, well, it opened at some point in my playthrough and I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> so th that's that's another reason that the general routing in this game works the way it does, like in addition to, you know, Turian being attached to Meridia as being the reason we do this last. That's also because <laughs> Ridley too. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> um, Ridley also actually, um, Ridley is the trigger for uh, uh, room state changes in Criteria, actually. Um, oh, yeah. If you go back to um, the outdoor Criteria areas after Ridley is killed, it's flooded. Um, which actually poses some interesting challenges for New Route since New Route does um, Ridley very early and then has to go back to Criteria to get gravity. Um, there's some transfer chains we end up having to do in any percent specifically uh, because those rooms are flooded and thus we can't jump normally in them anymore. Um, but it's still it's still worth that reroute. So these are finally getting back to the bottom two gates of this hall of gates. Oh, my throat is killing me. <laughs> Getting to the end though. This is the most contrived guardian, I think. Yeah, I would say so. I think I, I honestly, I think I like, I think the reason I like this hack so much is because it's so contrived everywhere. Yeah, that puzzle is kind of fun. Like, the, the bad part is when you actually get to the end of this, um, there's a, a power bomb pack, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there is. It's in this so room, it's actually. So it kind of makes you think that you get all this stuff for a power bomb. <laughs> I'm going to get it on the way back through here, because I have to go back through here. Um, yep. It's faster to get on the way back. Um, but yeah, so you have to jump into the ceiling to find this last guardian. This this should be the last one. Um, does x-ray reveal? Because I, I never got x-ray. It does. It's just kind of hard to position yourself in a way that it makes sense to use x-ray here. Mm, okay. Because uh, you have to be standing on ground to use it, obviously. Um, so we're almost at the end of the game, but there's still two pretty nasty <laughs> Shine Spark Chain items left. <laughs> also, of course, you can then hit that, uh, that, uh, gate, um, and now you can go back in anytime you want. <laughs> Yeah. Get that early. Yeah, but yeah, it just looks like it really just uh, looks like this area is just for the power bomb and the and the shortcut. Yeah. It, it with how ridiculous some of the other stuff this hack asks to use, um, it's actually not unbelievable that it would do that. So it's hard to put all of that together and just be like, oh, I bet there still has to be something here. Like it's believable that the game would make you do all this just for a power bomb. It says a lot about the hack itself. Um, so this is the start of... Um, is this the hardest? This is like... The last two chains, this is the longest chain in the game. Um, I don't know if it's the hardest. The last two are hard for really different reasons. Um, this one was just long. This one's pretty hard too, so... Yeah. Can I... Oh, yeah, I ran out. You basically like, can't make any mistakes in this room. Um, this is actually not even the intended place to start this chain. <laughs> um, there's another chain that you're supposed to open some speed blocks to allow you to run, to get run space in a different room. So. Uh, the worst part of this chain is at the end. There's a there's a memu that really likes to knock you out of position for the final <laughs> shine spark up to the item. It takes a long time to get back to. The initial position to set it up if you uh, mess it up near the end. Wow, 
last E tank. <laughs> got her all got all our E tanks. <laughs> Okay, now we're going to climb back up to the ramp where Botoon was because it is the ideal thing to use for this chain. That climb is pretty annoying. I'm not even sure it's intended, honestly, but... Now this one is stupid because... Um... Because enemies... Wow, that was such a stupid Kakatek snipe. Like, if, if an enemy hits you as you're doing the Shrine Spark input, it's probably going to... Eat something. Oh my goodness. Screw tech, please. Function. This is this is the most obnoxious one. That's I, I don't know if I'd say it's the hardest. But yeah, so in the next room, there are some of these ramps have snails on them. And if like the snail goes fully into its shell, it'll be solid and it'll stop your shine spark. Which is incredibly annoying. So we're basically almost at the end. So here, I have to do a combo of like, I gotta shoot the gate open, powerbomb the blocks in the middle, and shoot the door. This is the way. It it, it intends you to come up this way before going to Batsun uh, to get that that gate that we glitched earlier, and it's kind of nice to open that gate, that uh, green gate that he just went through, and and but then if we, if you fail uh, the spark into Batsun, you just it, it's easier to get back. Yeah. Yeah. So if we fail the spark to Batsun and and speedrun routes were just like really screwed because we don't have that shortcut <laughs> open okay so these are uh, these are the sand pits in this game and i keep quick dropping back to the sand the sand is like people say the sand is bad in vanilla sm it's really bad in it's so much sand. worse here <laughs> it, it's closer to what you experience in sand pits without a suit so without a gravity suit yeah it really is Okay, if I did everything right, that should be the last item. And there's a cute little elevator you get to take out of the sand pit. I actually really like that. Yeah, that should be all of the items. Well, there's there's one more item in I mean, in the escape. One, <laughs> one more somewhat obnoxious item. <laughs> so, like, it, usually the panic attack I have when running any person is like, did I remember to get all the guardians? Um, this is the gatekeeper. Um, he does a screen shake if you got all twelve, um, but if you don't have all twelve, he just uh, pops a text box up telling you how many. Chose the guardians need to disarm. So that pink door you can uh, open up and, and refill and come back. But we had another pink door that if you uh, <laughs> trying to get clever and open up and come back. <laughs> This, this one has the reef spawn flag set for <laughs> no reason, really. It just wants you to use your ammo. I mean, like you don't have to kill these Metroids. This, this one room. Not in the first room, no. Yeah, this this first room, but you do have to open the the purple door. <laughs> so the rest of Terrain is uh, basically um, each room has a specific Metroid count. Uh, most of the rooms have infinitely respawning Metroids. You just have to kill a specific amount, and then you can proceed. Um, the thing about these Metroids is they're extremely fast, um, and there's basically, like, it's, 
it, it, they get casual players a lot because uh, your roll speed is so garbage in this, like, or your acceleration rather. That's the real problem. Your roll acceleration is so bad that um, it's really hard to bomb them off you rolling side to side, which I think is the most common method people do. So I do the I do the jump, uh, late bomb in midair, uh, fall through it. Yeah. If you don't if you don't do the jump bomb midair like he's doing right here you're you're not surviving these rooms you have to learn how to do it this way yeah um so like you, you can theoretically dodge all of these um try and freeze them yeah. before uh they grab onto you <laughs> but it's they respawn unlikely so fast. yeah they they move really fast um the other thing about these is the super drop rate on these is abysmal also there's a mock ball i can do here to get under this gate uh it's a little a uh, little hidden shortcut that lets you skip uh, two Metroid rooms. Yeah, and and also, yeah, power bombs not working. Power yeah, so ice working. beam is hard required for. Hard required. Ice. <laughs> Game keeps eating my bomb input. Also, another thing to note is you'll notice he's using a lot of regular missiles. Uh, they don't like to drop super. And he has so many missiles, it's just better yeah. uh, to use the missiles instead of uh, uh, trying to use the supers. Uh, Mother Brain takes a lot of damage from supers, um, which is mostly relevant for phase one. She, like, takes... She takes crap damage from regular missiles. So she like she takes the normal vanilla amounts are like she takes 100 from regular missiles and 300 from supers. That's the normal damage values. Um, and this, her weaknesses are adjusted so that she takes 50 from regular missiles and 750 from supers, which also applies to the tank. So um, we want to have some supers to do the tank with because that's a lot of regular missiles otherwise. Um, and in like in other categories where you don't have the full beam combo, um, yeah, it's just more like important. Any, like like any percent, you only have spacer. You, you're fighting this. You're doing this fight with charged spacer, and that's it. Um, so you want for any percent, you want to preserve as many supers as possible to speed up the fight. To be clear, we don't pick a beam combo, so you have your choice of ice wave or spacer. And spacer with this higher fire rate, higher damage yeah, yeah. You can use there isn't any percent doesn't pick up beam combos that like ice wave and spacer is not really not that good it's like it actually barely does more damage than spacer it's not worth it to get beam combo unless you have plasma so baby skip screw attack helps with this a lot so we're gonna get into a room so notice uh there's there's no reason. Yeah, the side hopper. Yeah. So the side hopper is after the baby. So if you don't get the baby And also skip before the and... refill. <laughs> yeah, and before the Yeah, if you don't get the baby skip and uh you're expecting you could literally just die right there. Uh, I think I I'm guessing I know with the reserve tank saved me in that room. <laughs> yeah, the reserve tanks are your I'm friend. Guessing. I I specifically get one in low percent because there's no other way to live that room. Except for dodging them. Also, nice thing about uh, another nice thing about the uh, screw attack only working when you use the run button. Uh, you don't have to turn off screw attack for a zep skip there. Yeah, that's pretty nice. And it basically, saves a menu, and you'll you'll see why in a second why it's only a menu save. So that there are refills um, for if you get baby grabbed, uh, but they're in the save room, which is why we didn't see them. This is 24 shots. Uh, supers and full beam combo do about the same. Um, supers are actually slightly faster because the charge cooldown is even slower. So the rainbow beam damage is going to be a little bit different, so you'll see him damage himself down uh, slightly different. Also, night, night, the, you'll see the scourge hatch dashes here. A little less important when you have, you know, 14 tanks, but uh, it's like, you get pretty scary at moments uh, when 
when you're, you know, any percent. And... Yeah, so the rainbow beam does 439 damage instead of 300 from this. Um, it actually is just literally, it does one damage per frame, and uh, it's just lengthened to 439 frames. <laughs> also notice uh, no gravity suit anymore. Uh, in fact, what do we ha what do we still have? Wall jump and bombs. Wall jump, morph and bombs, and uh, morph. hyper beam. Okay. So mother brain three not free in this game, <laughs> at all. Yeah. Also the physics. Like now we've. So basically, you lose most of your equipment, and um, yeah, it's. I think it's a pretty good like setup for a theoretical next game. You're losing most of your stuff because like every time you start a new Metroid game in the series, it's like you don't have anything. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so we take four times more damage than with Gravity Suit because that handles the damage reduction. Um, we're also back to the like really restrictive physics from the start of the game, not having any of the movement items. Um, the Spring Ball is pretty sorely missed in the escape tunnels. Extremely sorely missed. Um, yeah. But yeah, so like just less movement options and the gravity in this game uh make this a not free mb3 i mean i have all the e-tanks so it's like it's fine in hundo it's whatever but you can take a lot of damage really quickly because uh mother brain 3 is pretty aggressive like there you go <laughs> yeah <laughs> one onion ring like this that's two takes down <laughs> one onion ring is 80 but I you get comboed by four is three twenty. The onion rings um, yeah. ignore invincibility frames. I should say one onion ring shot, not one onion ring. One, one volley. Like yeah, people yeah, usually exactly. say. Volley is a good word for it. So notice we have 25 minutes to get out. <laughs> That's how long the escape. Um, it, it, first part is really just kind of. That's kind of funny. Like I, I find the first part kind of it's long and slow and kind of gets you into a false sense of security. It's um, very calming after like that yeah. Turian being all frantic and depending on how well equipped you are for Mother Brain. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of relaxing at times, almost like if you know what you're doing, it's relaxing. If you don't, if you're playing this for the first time, then... oh, the first time, oh my god, yeah, because because it, it's a little bit maze like you don't always know exactly where you're going. It, it, it gets um, way more dangerous later. <laughs> yeah, the, the, it's, it's long and slow at the beginning, and then uh, yeah, quite dangerous at the end. Uh, there's some little shortcuts that I I actually found out about these because I from watching the tasks I didn't know about them before there's like those little tiny cracks and those bomb blocks that, that so there's a shortcut through that um little maze yeah at least we still have hyper beam so pirates don't stand a chance Don't get fooled by the first set of platforms there, because we need to go up these. Oh, you see, there's this missile in the escape. Uh, actually, since you hyper beam shot into it, Samus is on like a random kind of color of the animation. I used to I used to play a guessing game in my chat where like I would try to guess um, what color Samus would show up when you go to the escape missile. But I haven't. And that's set that that'll up be for the final long. item. Yeah. But yeah. The... That it is, is the 148th pack. item. <laughs> it is a 10 pack, and you will need all 10 of those missiles. Yeah. So don't fire six shots. <laughs> then, did you did you do that right away when you played this? Did you I, fire oh yeah. Six shots well, I didn't. The... I did. Yeah, I fired six shots by accident. And I knew it was gonna come back to bite me, but by the time it did, I forgot. <laughs> okay. So you know what's actually hilarious about that is um, the the way the rate of fire is set up sets you up to do that. Um, it, it does. So. Like, um, it's like there's in all... threes naturally. So, the 
so in vanilla, um, there's a there's a setting, there's a specific byte that controls the max number of um, uh, missiles and bombs that can be on screen, um, and in vanilla it's set to five, so you can have five missiles on screen at a time. Um, in redesign, it's actually set to three. Three missiles, three bombs. Yep. And yep. the thing that gets you is that if you can only have three missiles on screen at a time, when you're firing them at a faster rhythm, you're actually more likely to fire them in bursts of three. And that doesn't yes. happen in vanilla. It's specifically because of that change made to redesign, which like I'm not even sure why he did that, honestly. Yeah, um, especially given the importance of that 10 pack. Well, like, yeah, it, it, that actually, like, I firmly believe that you would not have fired six if. It didn't have the. If it had been no. Oh yeah, I, I believe that. The too. three. Because like, I was thinking about it, but I, I you know, just it was very natural to, to fire the extra missiles. You, you will not have that kind of cadence be natural in vanilla. It, it just yeah. will not happen. It's pretty rare that I fired six at a door in vanilla. So that was a nice little shortcut with that um, midair morphin too. Yeah, that one, that one's pretty hard. I I tend to get that one from the test as well. It was. Was, that one was hard to get used to. Uh, there, oh, there's so one shortcut wanted... in the part of this that is actually slower, funnily enough. Yeah. Well, it's funny, like, that, that, that room boot just now, um, you think you'd want to go high? No, you want to go low. It, it, oh, no, 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 not that room. That, there. there's, it's coming up. Oh, it's, uh, it's coming there. up? Okay, okay. Yeah. Maybe that one kind of shows you that, because if you look at the way that, that acid rises, it looks like it's getting kind of high on you. No, it has nothing to do with acid. It's a, it's a, um, it's a gate. No, I'm talking about the, the, the room a... where, uh, where you think you want to go high, but then you go low instead because of the. You think you want to go high because you think the acid's gonna get you, but uh, you want to go low. Oh no, I'm ta I'm talking about a shutter. Okay. Um, there's so there's, there's, like a, there's, like, there's like a there's like there's <laughs> like so there there's I think it might be this next room. Uh, so there's like a top path that you can you can get into the correct tunnel for it if you're paying attention. Um, and it's harder to get to. See that path that's above me? Um, that path is slower because um, when you get down to where this shutter is and you bomb it, you have to wait for both halves of it to clear. Oh, yeah, yeah, this one. Yeah, so another, yeah, I think it's, yeah, both places. So that, that shortcut. It looks like you want to go higher, but you want to go lower. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> it's so funny. Honestly, I, I love that part of it. It's a bit of a troll. Um, but yeah, the, the acid thing, um, that acid line comes with an... It comes one pixel short of damaging you, so uh, the acid line that I went through earlier, um, it looks like you want to avoid it, but yeah, you, it is faster to go down it, and you're perfectly safe doing so. See, we're back to a lot of bomb jumping and a lot of double, and even you know, a lot of those bubbles up. Sorry, double bomb jumps that we did at the beginning. <laughs> Bu bubble bomb jumps sound like <laughs> yeah, MST those now. Those <laughs> Okay, so that was that trade number one. Uh, that one's easy to dodge. You just mock yeah, ball. Yeah, that one. But... You don't even need a mock ball. You just need to roll. Yeah. And that second one. You just... This one you have to like. It's never an issue. So this second one is really scary. Uh, if it grabs you, it's basically a race against your health to the bottom. There's a health refill yep. at the bottom here. Um, but I specifically. Um, run and I, I jump high to influence it to get off screen as fast as possible. Once it gets off screen, it's stuck. Yeah, it's a slower, but I don't know if it's easier or not, but it's the way I figured out, because the second time I tried to go through the escape, uh, I got bodied by MB3. And so you can kind of roll and, and attract it and then, you know, let it do its thing and then roll under it and, it, and you can get out, get away with it, not getting hit. Um, because I was at, at a health, so if I was going to get touched by, grabbed by that Metroid, I wasn't making it to the health refill. So there's a couple ways to avoid it. Oh, nice. I have never fallen through that one. Okay. And now part of the escape that right now isn't too bad. And better make sure you have the five missiles there, too. <laughs> so th this room right here doesn't start out too bad with the platforms, but if you've ever done the Nestroid escape, it definitely harkens back to that. And these platforms get smaller and smaller. Once it gets and to the top, they... it, it gets to the point where like the entire screen, the screen shakes by the entire width yep. of each platform, so it's really hard to see them. Also, these these like mechanics, the the speeds 
at which your spin jump and your like straight jumps differ are not intuitive at all. Um, so I think that's why a lot of people have trouble climbing or redesign rooms. Um, I have a lot of practice doing so, so I was able to get up that pretty easily, but that's like, that's a room that kills people just from like falling down over and over when they first play this. Okay, now remember some of these criteria areas and remember that we don't have a gravity suit anymore. Yeah, this this spits out into actually <laughs> it spits out into a room that we skipped because this is one of the rooms in Criteria that had uh, an underwater ninja pirate fight. Yep. We actually skip every single ninja pirate and uh, yeah, yeah, in the I, game. You know, I never even thought about that. There's, there's, <laughs> even in Hundo. <laughs> yeah, there's two that you're supposed to fight in Lower Norfair as well that. Um, uh, we get around with the gate glitch and they don't block an item, so... Uh, I I kind of want to run map completion for this at some point, too. I, I normally wouldn't, just because it's like a pain to verify. Um, but th this hack I like enough that I think I would do it. Oh, it, it which forces... I guess we should talk about the, the, the animal save. Uh, you'll have to decide whether you want to do it or not, but it's a... Uh, it is a... Uh, there is an animal save. Um, it does hit some rooms that wouldn't otherwise be hit, so map completion would require a uh, animal save. Yeah, um, that feature that's pretty interesting, I think. Yeah. So, so uh, yeah, there is there is a, a save or kill animals uh, potential in this one. It's like it's um, like four extra minutes. So it's, it's part of the reason why the escape timer is so long. Um, in addition to like time to get lost in Turian. In some sense, you'd have you time into the escape before you'd have to cut off an incentive there. You can cut off like at the elevator, I guess. I, 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 oh, yeah, there's, the, still, yeah, there's yeah, lots yeah. of time for that. You, you, you don't have to just cut it off at Mother Brain. So um, I'm not I'm not going to do it in this run, but the animal save is um, it's past the ship. I, I did it in, uh, any in the any percent run. I did it in the any percent run that I did for Fan Game Marathon 2021. Um, This is when things start to get a little scary because like up until this point like nothing was likely to kill you except that one metroid and now we start seeing lava a lot of the lava rooms are uh the ones early in like purple mushroom criteria those are mostly dangerous if you don't know where to go um yeah. it rises pretty slowly in most of these rooms but there's some rooms where it's like um like this room i'm coming into uh this one is like a pretty big room. This room is like on the way to Morph Ball, and it's like there's a lot of stuff going on in this room, so it's like um, you have to figure out where to go towards the ship. Uh, which the ship got moved, by the way. The ship moves in the escape because there's a um, there's a landslide, there's a cave in or something. Um, but yeah, so like if you go down. There's a place that you can go further down there, and that will get you killed because the lava has risen to that part of that point. So here I'm gonna run into this room. Uh, this room's flooded now, um, but if you get a running start into the water without starting a run in the water, um, you can still mock ball because um, it's it's dependent more on whether you have the run state rather than what your actual speed is. Uh, okay, so west of landing site, this door unlocks during the escape. This is an escape only room, and it's, the, it's probably the most dangerous room. Um, this is acid, and if you mess up the wall jumping, the acid will catch up to you and make you unable to proceed. It's, I, it's definitely the scariest room in the escape, and then uh, pretty much the, now we're past the dangerous stuff. Yeah, you're stuff not going to die can... anymore. Um, you can yeah. still lose the run because there's you have to go through the court area again. Time so remember the tile perfect <laughs> jump I was talking about way at the start? Um, where like you, you're crossing over to where Bomb Teresa is. Um, we have to do that jump. When the screen's shaking, there's steam everywhere, and the room is flooded. So if you miss that jump, it, you lose an entire minute. I have lost um, world record bases to missing that jump. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> Got it. I, I used to call that one the, the final boss. The, the true final boss. For good reason. <laughs> I am, there's a lot of intentional steam hit to make sure I don't get hit by a one at a bad time. And that's it. See for Metroid to resign 100%. Yeah, we gotta wait for the credits though. Yeah, <laughs> I've done it. Hopefully it's 100%, but. <laughs> uh, this run is just packed with a lot of crazy stuff. Um, and I, I would point out that, assuming it is 100%, that's a, a world record, so... Yeah, my my old PB's kind of out of date. I, I update a lot of stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, fair enough, but I mean, you still have to actually do the run, so... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, gonna be working on this a, a bit more... Um, upcoming. But in fact, back where it will be, you'll be doing it uh, Friday evening. Yeah, Friday. So, uh, so the folks over at No Reset uh, Speedrun, um, they do, uh, they do really good marathons at. Um, yeah, no uh, reset a lot of them, a lot of them are at um, DreamHack events. Um, they've done like DreamHack Montreal, DreamHack Dallas, and Atlanta, and. Um, but they're doing a Metroid Maniathon on uh, Metro Dread's release date, actually. So I'm doing a hundo run for that. I, I, I was just going to say this better be a hundo run, because I actually made a list of items this time. <laughs> Yeah, I was following that list. Yeah, we had, we had a nice list. <laughs> following the list as best as I can. Um, I guess I should shout out. Uh, there's been a lot of people that have worked heavily on oh, okay. um, oh, routing absolutely. and running redesign the past several years. So I've been like the most active runner for most of it. Um, and I've had the record for six, six and a half years. Um, but uh, Personitis. Uh, ran it with me, uh, like, when I started running it, basically, and he and I would stay up late on Discord all the time, and, uh, uh, strat hunting and theorizing, theory crafting. With all the arcane triggers in this game, uh, there was a lot of evolution that we got to put in practice for the any percent route in particular. And he and I discovered RBO, Escape the Escape, um, some crazy super stuff this past year as well. Um, Kamaru is also uh, also runs this. Uh, took second place from Personitis, uh, I think, a couple of years ago, and uh, he's been like the best at like actually keeping stuff documented and um, like writing down strats. And uh, he's given me a lot of ideas that I didn't have myself. And uh, also uh, Aussie One Hundred and One for uh being a really good smz3 rival but also like um he actually picked up learning this uh he's one of several people who actually learned this entire run and then never had time to do a run um but he found a lot of really good strats uh uh there was a mock ball into like a door into spilling into the first underwater room that turned out to be a lot faster that i stole from him go <laughs> it's official all right so yeah submitting this along with uh any percent uh it's kind of uh, kind of pick your poison as far as like um crazy tricks to get items or um crazy ride. a difficult dangerous route basically yeah. um but yeah thanks for watching